Does Illinois allow the dual trailer action? I don't Bob. know. As far as like, or? that's when you see like a art, like a somebody's pulling like a camper trailer with a boat. Correct. You're talking. I don't know. Yeah. So, so we were in New Mexico and they allow that, and it was a piece of shit like F two fifty hauling a giant goddamn three axle camper mm-hmm. with a dual axle trailer with two golf carts on it. Wow. So this thing is and 70, just, yeah, 70 yeah. feet long. And he is flying <laughs> with this goddamn monstrosity on the back. So go fast enough. It stays straight. Yeah, it'll, 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 it'll pull so. through it. Yeah, it'll pull through it. it. That's what they say, right? Yeah. I, I've seen that like thing where you, you change the weight and it, all of a sudden yeah. there's one of those. But so this guy comes past us as we're like getting off to, to get gas. And, uh, I, it made me wonder how many times do you think families are doing that and they get to whatever pilot and they walk back and they go, didn't Where we the have fuck's the boat? Did you <laughs> or like, where's the Jeep? Did you hook the Jeep up? Yeah. I swear I hooked the Jeep it, up. Yeah. It happens pretty often. Cause that's what I always worry about. Like the most is like, you know, one of my, my mom's things is like, well, you know, I worry about you all the time. I'm like, don't worry about me. Worry about the fucking other assholes that are yeah. out there. Welcome to Oil and Whiskey, an Ironclad Original. I am Josh Henning. I'm Phil Gerber. I'm Jeremy Gerber. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is Jeremy Sainer from Lucky Strike Designs, and you are listening to the world famous Oil and Whiskey. All right, Man, fucking I like that. Huh? Yeah. yeah, I don't. I don't want to do it now. That's a tough act to follow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and with me today is Josh Henning. Beautiful as always. I appreciate that. Jeremy Gerber, also beautiful. Oh, thank you. But the one that takes the cake, Phil Gerber. This guy right here. Good look. Yeah. He'd come back with that from vacation tan. That's uh, You do look better. You, you look a little tanner, too. With, with the tan. How, how, did Josh go on vacation? Yeah, I, did you go on vacation? Did you? I was That's weird, because you tan. did. Yeah. So you went on vacation and you got tan, right? Yeah. He was riding a motorcycle across the country. looks pretty tan. Uh, uh, well, for... Uh, so you know, my problem is I'm 75% ginger, <laughs> and uh, I got super sunburnt on my way into Texas on this trip, and uh, my buddy's got a really nice pool, so we got drinking, and who needs sunscreen, right? That's yeah. Absolutely. So and the sun, uh, you got a said. tan from the sun? Uh, uh, more or less, I got boiled by the sun, okay. and I had like a uh, like nipple high sunburn that uh, <laughs> from, the pool. Uh, from waiting yeah yeah and that turned into dude, uh, i just welcome everybody just, back <laughs> to oil and whiskey not, and ironclad yet, original we still have and, we're uh, working on something here this is uh we're, we're rolling it out Josh. Right, we gotta start gonna, the podcast though they is this gonna gonna be the sure we'll podcast? circle we'll circle yeah. right around back <laughs> they could cut this and then put it after the intro they have the yeah. ability to do that how did you get a tan josh because you didn't Phil went on vacation. I was in Florida. I was in Destin, Florida. I got a little bit of a suntan. So we he had to cut. We had to cut the other story out, but this story goes in. Yeah. Which Just story? share with us. So where did you I'm, go on vacation? I'm, I'm curious how that happened. I went to an all inclusive. He went to Hollywood resort. Hmm. Like a sandals kind of thing. Kind of. Yeah. First, anybody can go. Kind of only monthly like membership. Like sandals. It's called Planet, Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness. <laughs> <laughs> Planet Fitness. <laughs> Josh here's been doing himself a little bit of tanning, in I the mean, tanning bed. Oh, I mean, you, you do it like preemptively to not get sunburned. Yes. Yeah. I'm, no, health, but you I'm don't health have, conscious. Yes. You don't have a trip plan where you could potentially get sunburned, do you? No, I like to look good nude. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, how, how can any of us argue that it. point? You may have yeah. saved it with that. Okay, touche. Well done. <laughs> Welcome to Oil and Whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> An ironclad original. We recommend tanning here. Uh, today's guest is Jeremy from Lucky Strike Designs. You might have seen his sticker here, his sticker over my shoulder. Oh, shit. I got a boom or mic his, sticker? Uh, yep. You got a boom mic sticker. Right hell there. yeah. Or his handiwork oh, up there. Hell yeah. That's Damn. awesome. Yeah. How many times have you worn that helmet? I asked, I asked Josh, and he thinks uh, it's four. No, I've worn it quite a bit. I rode when I first, when you first finished the paintwork, I rode that bike quite a bit. But then you didn't like messing the helmet up or getting bugs on it. So yeah, <laughs> that's the problem. Relegated about it, it to a trophy. It, yeah. It, without the shield on it, just packs bugs. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. After but, five thousand miles with this helmet, it, I'm pretty sure I'm surprised there's paint left on it. To be honest. But look at that, man! I get so much enjoyment out of looking at it. It's a beautiful piece of work. Does do, you, do you remember whenever uh, we did that? I do. What year? Oh, 2016. Was it really? Yeah. Damn. No way. Yeah. 
Yeah, it all how, came up because uh, that was the same year that I painted the back seats for Jesse James or the back seats of his yeah. Polera. Yeah. And that was 2016. Damn. Your time long flies. Long time, time ago. Long time ago. Yeah. Long time. Shit. Like it came up in like my Facebook memories or whatever the hell that is. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It's like, holy shit, that was, this, that was a long time ago. Those Facebook memories, I feel like, are really depressing. Yeah. Because yeah. that's exactly what they do. You're like, oh, that was awesome. Holy fuck. Yeah. That was that long ago? Jesus. And for you, I mean, you're on borrowed time now, so that's what. <laughs> but you're not on Facebook. Nope. His MySpace memories pop up. Yeah. <laughs> Tom's still your You should <laughs> tan more, and they wouldn't be so depressing. You should, you should tan. You're tan. You're, you're the one that tans. I know. Tan you tans. less. <laughs> Before we get into this, we need to. You get to come along the, for the ride, dude. For, I am so I am so we honored. To, and we get some this. unboxing. We get some unboxing. Go, go ahead, Phil. We've got some You've boxes got that showed up in the you. mail today. Yep. Yeah, this was exciting. These were gifts. These were gifts from a local uh, badass knife ma- knife maker, Red Horse Knife Works. Just out of the blue, followed the podcast. Says he loves it. Here's we're really into knives. Check these out. Let me know what you guys think. Dude, and these are no joke. What? Either. Those are badass. Those are sick. Those are the best, like, text messages to out. get when they're from you or Josh, and there's like, hey, a package. Hey, we have gifts. There's a package here. I believe the response was, uh, well, first I sent a text out, new knives in my office now. Both of you guys were here in, like, 30 seconds, <laughs> and Jer fired off a goody gumdrops so excited. <laughs> you did but, say goody yeah, gumdrops. I did. These are awesome. The yeah, carbon yeah. fiber handle was sick. You great yep. blade style. Josh, you're the uh, wealth of knowledge. What do you call that, like, arced cleaver blade? Is there a technical term for that? Uh, I don't know what the name of that blade style is. I think that's but, his but, signature blade. Yeah, all his knives are in this it's cool. fashion. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, I love the red inlay. He calls this the, what, the Hellhound, I think? Is what he calls uh, this knife. I think it's the Hellhound. Yeah, yeah just a lot of cool details, like the rounded edge on the top, drilled uh, yeah. top section of this knife, a little knurling back yeah, there. Yeah, I love the, just the uh, spine, the back of the blade there. It's just that round over is just so super cool. A little extra layer of detail. A little extra layer of detail. What's in the big box, Phil? The big box is... is the, if there's a samurai sword that comes out of this, I'm gonna be, <laughs> it's going to be hey, wild. Oh, samurai's up there. Bam. Uh, <laughs> it's actually a katana. <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Okay. I stand corrected. Yeah. I'm sorry. But what was the little so, sword that like the the samurais like committed suicide with or whatever? Was there? Because that wasn't a katana. That's the one where you're not supposed to put it back in the sheath without blood on it, right? I think so. I remember that from that's the a knife katana, collector right? show. I, I thought the katana was like the, the bigger that, one. Oh, I don't know. I don't know either. You can tell we're not really big on <laughs> no, that. No. We know just we know enough to be yeah. dangerous. I watched Tom Cruise on that last samurai and just remember he had like three of those <laughs> things or something. That was a horrible movie for him. <laughs> they're really cool. Yeah, they're really oh, cool. They are. Badass. Made um, right here in Chicago, huh? Yep. Chicago made. Red Horse Knife Works. Website is rhkwinc.com or check him out on Instagram, Red Horse Knife Works. Um, in his note, he said that uh, he's trying to do something a little bit different. Uh, they've kind of gotten pretty far in the custom, semi-custom knife world and the tactical side and the, the daily carry stuff and didn't see a lot of people doing that in the kitchen and culinary world. So he came out with a line called Serene. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. <laughs> Look out. Please tell me you're going to do the Asian like this will cut. This will, this will kill. Yeah. It will kill. I will kill. <laughs> so did a badass chef's knife. Do you have the overhead camera on? Ooh. <clears throat> Little RS logo in there. Um, awesome rubberized G10 handle. It feels really fucking cool. I haven't seen that before. Have you? It, no, I've never said it's bad. And the thing is lightweight, which is yeah. crazy. Kind of cool. Pick that up. Relief machining in it. Get RS that. logo. You're, you're out of the frame. Oh, we're coming in. in. We're there. coming in. That's a gorgeous, gorgeous knife there. That thing is sick. Have you ever seen the rubberized G10 in the I handle? I have not. It feels it real good. It feels good. Yeah. It's rubberized G10? Yeah. I think it's layer rubber, rubber. Oh, I got you. Rubber, the black part rubber, is the rubber. Layer of rubber, it. layer of G10. So are you it's guys going to start like trying to see who can slice a tomato like the thinnest? We'll we throw a water bottle and wife. stab them. <laughs> yeah. I'll call my wife right down here and tell her to slice the shit out of a tomato. 
that's usually what happens after the podcast. We're all standing out in the parking lot. We kind of have like a recap and we're talking. Somebody's drinking a bottle of water and then it goes up in the air and it's a quick draw. <laughs> <laughs> Phil's doing pretty good on the, I think you're the lead in the pack. Yeah, I dominated right the last now. go round. Hell yeah. Ooh, nice presentation that by is, Josh that here. Is super nice. Trying to get to it. Shine, yeah, those trying, are trying, sick. Trying. You can't thank that guy enough, yeah. man. Yeah, the carbon fiber handles are absolutely killer. I like that. Kick ass shit. There's badass by local uh, yeah. knife maker and cool. He's just sending it uh, to us, see what we think. In uh, the last line of his email was use them, use them often, beat the hell out of them. So we're going to do that. Checked out the Instagram. He's got some some cool ass shit on there. I cool cigar cutters too. Uh, so. Exactly. Yeah. 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 That's something pretty, pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> but wait, there's more. No, is there. I feel like I'm on like a special edition of Dude, oil this and whiskey. This is a right good now. one because this is anytime you get to unbox things, yeah, it's unboxing exciting is super for me. Cool. Uh, so this is from Cody Childress. Childress. Is that Tyler's Cody brother? It's Any not, no relation. No, Childress, not Childress. Got it. Got uh, from the whiskey garage. Let's get that in there too. Look at that. Yeah, let me move these glasses oh, for yeah. you, Josh, before you shatter them. <laughs> this was such a great packaging as well. It's been sitting here for a few weeks because we haven't had the opportunity to enjoy this. So the whiskey garage, um, it's even cool. Uh, so there's a bottle of whiskey in here. This is still sealed. Why don't you do the honors and open that up? Um, he has whiskey garage on Instagram. He has a, uh, whiskey club tasting group and uh they did a private barrel selection uh from this bill binder this binder stash i've seen him around on the instagram i don't know him personally i just keep hearing things about his whiskey picks and selections there's a little bit of mystery to it of how it all works but he reached out and said i'm going to send you guys a bottle if you would be willing to taste it and try it out on the podcast and that's always a yes absolutely so. oh wow there's oh there's many things. There's, oh, there's there's many things collection. oh man <laughs> there's many many things in this box this is like for the box for the should, shipping. We, should we disclose that no, or not? No. Okay, yeah. There's Tic Tacs for your breath and such. Should you require. Yeah. Well, see, and the other thing you need to, like, how did the, the knives do? That? Like, I don't know if he's going to be. Oh, it, it cut right through. I don't know knife. if he's going to be happy that we took a badass <laughs> brand new knife and got boxes open. He said with to it, do that, right? He, said, he yeah. said use the shit out of it. Yeah. yeah. That thing sliced right through that fucking box like yeah. it was nothing. I mean, really, sure. all of us that carry pocket knives, I mean, I feel like we all just cut yeah, down just, boxes and oh, asking yeah. right? You know? Oh, see, that, that's the part you should have done on the overhead camera. That yeah, like, to see you just opening it up. Yeah. I oh, know, I should have. That yeah. precise incision style. That is precise like a precision. <laughs> this would be a great opportunity for Josh to catch an artery. To <laughs> <laughs> just spurting <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Does it have to be sped up? So yeah, I could do that. Wait. Just think Technology. about the guy that had to wrap that. So this is Devil's River Distiller Select Texas Mash Bill. So we've got two things to try. That's something I've never seen or heard of. Nicely packaged. Yeah, that was like an Amazon or an Apple box. Yeah, know, like that right. slide. I'm fighting this one over here. It's a Texas, huh? Find the end. You got to find the end. Phil, I chase it. Did and then I. Got if we only had a knife, <laughs> I don't want to cut the bottle. I get it through the through the neck. It's like ten layers here. Ellie's gonna chop this up and make me look like an idiot. No, we're gonna. This real. is gonna be slow mo. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the whole entire, the whole forget entire it, thing. Forget about speeding it up. That's Four hour <laughs> podcast coming in hot. <laughs> All right, we're going for it. Oh, that was way easier. Yeah, if only we had like knives <laughs> at our disposal. <laughs> yeah. A tool that can cut things. Yeah, a very sharp, nice <laughs> knife would. 
Remember when we used to have like fans and listeners before we decided to take 30 minutes to open up a bottle? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your time to go get a break. Uh, Devil's River, Distiller Select, Straight Bourbon Whiskey, Texas Mash Bill, Limited Series, Devil's River Distillery, uh, 60 uh, by volume, so 120 proof. Uh, <laughs> Bill's, Bill's going to be open in the, <laughs> an hour into this podcast. <laughs> We are going to cover Jeremy's entire <laughs> career. Go ahead. Give us some. <laughs> well, see, let's did, pour us up. Did any of you guys have family members that like played cruel jokes like this at Christmas? Oh, or, you'd, yeah. You'd, you'd tape every scene. Yeah, exactly. Of the, yeah, the I feel like that's what this is like. Inside. Yeah. Yeah, I had a cousin that uh, took that like clear contact paper that like you would wrap like textbooks in and did a bunch of gift cards. So you saw what they were. Good luck getting <laughs> that good. bastard out though. Got her done. <laughs> all right. All right. That's a great looking bottle. That is. Well, that smells good. It does smell great. There you are, Philip. All right, so as and a that's got a great color too. So as a non bourbon aficionado, or is that the right word? Aficionado. aficionado. Uh, of, uh, official audio. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Official audio. Um, what 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 does a guy look for here? Color is always good. No, it's nice to see a dark color. That doesn't mean that it's gonna be good because mm-hmm. there is some some good whiskeys that are lighter. Gotcha. Um, but. When you do see that, like, candy brown, okay. Okay. like if you see that candy brown, whatever, yeah. it's... So, Josh, tell us about the weight. You know, we, we talked about that the viscosity. with uh, Aaron from uh, Smoke Wagon. Yes. And he yeah. learned us something. The legs. Yeah. So, if you if you run it up on the side of the glass, right, mm-hmm. and then see see how that runs down, see how it sticks. Oh, yeah, there right? you go. A little yep. motor oil to yeah. it. Yeah. You want it, you want, I like the, the, the... Choose your words carefully. The viscosity when it's a little thicker. Gotcha. Right? Like cough syrup level? Not that thick, okay. but going going that direction from, you know, real thin alcohol. Gotcha. Right? Gotcha. Ultimately, at the end of the day, all the fancy words, the smells, the way it hangs on the glass, if you the like taste. it, then it's yeah. good. Yeah, that's fair. That's if you fair. don't, then it's so, not so So do good. you sip or do you just hammer it home? Yeah, you sip that. Sip it? Yeah. You just creep up on it a little bit. That's got a really good flavor. That's really good. Damn. <clears throat> that is good. And I'm not a what is urban usually, guy. What do you usually reach for if you um On a motorcycle trip, usually it's uh, double Tito's and Sprite. And uh, like I was telling Phil earlier, sometimes it turns into an all Tito's and a <laughs> show the can to it. You know? <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, like I'm, I'm really not a <clears throat> bourbon okay. guy. I mean. Well, hopefully we could get virtue. But that is that is that is good. I'm very surprised. So yeah. that's 120 proof, right? Yeah, yeah you can The tell. last one we had was 110. That's way smoother. Than way that. smoother. Yeah. Way way smoother. It it does have burn. It's got some proof. I mean, we you can tell that, but it's not. So is the proof what makes it burn? Well, we sometimes had, sometimes gotcha. we we got learned by uh, Aaron from Smoke Wagon that me particularly we were going through. Some of the times when I say, oh, wow, that's hot, that burns, it's not the proof. It is because of the oak. So some people have an oversensitivity to the oak itself. Gotcha. So you'll you'll think that that's what burning because it's from a high proof or whatever, but it's just it's over oaked or whatever it is. Gotcha. Yeah. Gotcha. I am so glad to have you by my side to retain all this information. Because for you me, you were here. I know. That's yeah. why I'm saying that because I don't. This is it, a compliment. Yeah, I'm getting And it's compliment. being recorded. You can play this back. Right. Thank you for that. Well, because this time I'm going to pack that away and I'm going to retain it this time. <laughs> Highly doubt it. You're going to remind him again in a week. See, I feel like maybe like in the corner here, you should like, he's too good bourbon. We should yeah, take but we, we don't. We haven't like I've been able to identify him. We just keep learning new shit yeah. every single time. Now, is that like different uh, like distillers do different things to get different yes. things? Like, is that you got distillers, you got blenders. So blenders is what uh, smoke wagon, those three that you see in those cool, dark, matching kind of bottles. He's a blender. He gets a lot of different shit from the distilleries. Gotcha. Right? And the Rick Houses at different ages. And then he mixes that stuff together to come up with what his flavor profile that he wants. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and who is not a blender? A distiller. That would be us. Oh, we're no, we're not blenders. We've tried our hand at blending, and it was. Um, you guys stick yeah. in the efficient audios. It, it yeah. turns yeah. out like it's not really it blending. Just like, that's just pouring a bunch of shit in the bottle. <laughs> turns out you need to know what the fuck you're doing. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. That's that's, fair. Cool. that's like people that say you know I know how to paint, but you know. Right. Turns don't. out. Right. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. 
That makes well, perfect sense. This is really good. So then, then what, what do you guys grade this? Is this is this part of the podcast oh, where, where you guys are going to grade <laughs> we, this? We'll, we'll get we, into it. We grade it. Later. We grade yeah, it at we the get, end. We got to get we gotta get that whole glass. Get, get a couple of you and loosen up a little bit. Gotcha, gotcha. So after like 17 of them, then mm-hmm. you I'm going to give up. <laughs> I'm going to this many. Look this up because <laughs> I am quite. It's low. That is loaded with flavor, man. It is. It's good. So and then and then I see you guys also do like ice ice balls or you know whatever. Is yeah. there a whiskey that you should put ice with or not put ice with? Any any of the high end stuff you really want to drink it neat and so, just sip it. Like if it's uh, initially burns are tough to get down. If you're not like a seasoned bourbon drinker, just kind of sip it and creep up on it. But yeah, a little it, dash of water in there. It's kind of sacrilegious to take something and, you know, that's a quality bourbon and dilute it with ice, but... Gotcha. There's some other stuff that's just... Like, you get, like, a Buffalo Trace that's good no matter what, Mm -hmm. and it's fine to throw it on the rocks, but... This this has got absolutely fantastic reviews by just about everywhere I'm finding it. It's saying it's got an MSRP of $52. Damn. I'll see this bottle. It's obtainable, then. I've never seen it anywhere. Devil's River Distillers Select Bourbon from Texas. Uh, yeah, recently got this. Finally trained. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, four point nine stars out of fourteen reviews. That was great whiskey. Uh, Devil's River Whiskey dot com. Go check them out. That shit's. That turns out this whiskey garage dude might know what the fuck care. he's talking about. Uh, well, 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 let's get into it because yeah. we've got a very special guest we in do. person <laughs> here. Which yes. We uh, sure appreciate you making the trip, man. 5,000 miles just, just, to, just come to come see us. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Alaska. <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. So I, I actually had a buddy that lives down here that we met up uh, last night. Uh, shout out to Chris. He actually rode from here to Alaska on his bagger. Damn. So, yeah, he just got back uh, about a week ago, like put dirt tires on his road glide and blasted to Alaska. So, I mean, that's hardcore. Yeah. I'm, I'm kind of mental for the riding, but he's another level. You know. And he, that's something he does like solo. Or is there somebody else crazy enough to ride along with him? No, he did. He did it solo. So, I mean, he met a couple people on the ride and like talking to him last night. I mean, some of the places he went was beautiful and you know, you can only get to on, you know, four wheel drive or adventure bikes or something like that, but or a bagger um, with dirt tires. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he wrecked his bike. Like, I, I feel bad for him. He showed me pictures, and it was just like, holy just shit! Trashed. Yeah, you're never gonna get it clean, you know. But uh, but yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was it was crazy to talk to him. But uh, yeah, yeah, went to Sturgis and uh, decided to take the most direct route to come see you guys. Yeah, it was almost a straight line. Exactly, it's, exactly. Kind of like uh, if him or my dad would navigate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you stop that right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, I started coming here via Arkansas, Dallas, Santa Fe, Durango, Vail, Sturgis, and then here. So, I mean, I, I feel like that's Damn. a straight line. So. And you're coming Charlie out of, Daniels wrote a song about that. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. <laughs> you're coming out of... Virginia or Pennsylvania? I thought you were always in Pennsylvania. So uh, I was in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania for the longest time. Um, born and raised Pennsylvania kid. Uh, but uh, after COVID and a couple big life changes, I needed to get out of the snow and the gray. And uh, Williamsburg, Virginia is where I landed. Okay. So um, we're pretty much right on the coast now. Um, so I'm Damn. an hour from the beach, but I'm also maybe an hour and a half, two hours from uh, Blue Ridge Parkway in the mountains. So That's cool. um, it was it's been a great move. and. You know, shopping, everything's down there. We're all up and running and living in Virginia. Oh, yeah. Good for you, man. So, that's a that's a cool spot. I get a buddy who lives out in Clifton. So I've been not far from D.C. Yeah, yeah, it's northern Virginia. Yeah, I haven't made it out to the coast. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and I like Williamsburg because it's uh, part of the, uh, what they call the historic triangle. So you have Jamestown, <clears throat> Yorktown, Williamsburg. Sure. So, um, you know, I always get, you know, made fun of because I always say, like, that's where the pilgrims landed. Um, but it's one of the European, you know, people that came on their their giant boats back in the early days and settled there. And there's just tons of historic history, and the weather is beautiful. I mean, right now it's like 80 and sunny, and you know the rest of the week's gonna be that way. Damn. Yeah, they got some old shit out that way. They which do. Is cool. They do. <laughs> so it's 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 a it's a riot. Whenever uh, I kind of first went down there, and I'm like, oh, this is like, uh, you know, the high school field trip that you you went to right yeah. and uh see the or weren't allowed museums. to go to <laughs> <laughs> yeah in my in my opinion i was a little broke so i, I just went to the sea world and called it a day but um yeah it's it's beautiful down there it's a great move and uh you know, we're, 
we're killing it now. So oh, nice, man. So you rolled out of there straight out to Sturgis. How many days were you out there? Uh, we were only out there for three days, and sadly, it rained almost yeah. all of them. So this this year, Sturgis was a uh, really, really kind of gray and wet. But the uh, the ride out was beautiful. Uh, picked up you know four homies along the way, and you know blasted out there. So pretty much got up and decided to do. 400 miles or 600 miles just kind of picked a city that we we decided to kind of check out and it's been a been an awesome trip so yeah nice. no other plans just got to get to Sturgis kind of sort of by this day and yep exactly so we had an Airbnb uh, scheduled that was four blocks from Main Street so we kind of lucked out with that place because it was within stumbling distance so you know don't don't Perfect. recommend riding and drinking kids <laughs> but the uh, the trip itself um, you know we just decided to kind of take the the scenic route go see some stuff uh, road million dollar highway in Colorado um, you know Vail was awesome so we just got to kind of pinball up and then land in the Sturgis by uh, Monday and that was it. Man. So I'm jealous. Yeah. Sounds like an absolute fucking blast. Yeah. And like we did it uh, where it wasn't just holy hell highway, you know, ground and pound. Uh, you know, we kind of took some scenic routes through Colorado, which is absolutely beautiful. Uh, same with New Mexico. And uh, it was it was gorgeous the whole way. And uh, I highly recommend, you know, tons of routes out through there. Are just beautiful that nobody ever goes on you know they just always take 90 or yeah. 70 and you just never see the cool canyon roads in the little yeah. towns so. we've, we've fucked around with some canyon roads on road trips and stuff out out that direction Had a little bit of fun yeah 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 and it's and that's the thing is like everybody you know oh you're six thousand miles on a motorcycle like what the hell it's it's really not that bad when you're getting off the bike every 200 miles to get gas you right. know and you're kind of walking around in the little towns and talking to people and uh, there was a couple of places like we went into Montrose, Colorado, and people looked at our bikes like they were, you know, fucking UFOs. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's just wild that, you know, there's so many places you can go in this country that, again, nobody would ever see unless you you take those back roads. Right. Find any truck stop treasures along the way? Oh, I tell you what, I was, I was, <laughs> oh, you set, hard. set them up for that. Yeah. <laughs> so I was even, I sent Jeremy a picture. I was in, uh, shit, I, I think it was in New Mexico. And um, there was a, the biggest bison head I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like it, it was the size of, you know, that would have fit perfect <laughs> in here. Dude, it was, yeah. it was wild. And, it, and it's been there ever since that gas station was built. Like it had two inches of dust on it. And uh, I was like, how can I get this motherfucker to the roaster shop? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's going to be weird. The back. <laughs> yeah. we, we've been talking about adding some taxidermy to the studio. Yeah. And we yes. were specifically looking for shitty 1970s oh, taxidermy. Dude, I think like the <laughs> eye was like kind of droopy because like the glue's starting to finally let go. Dude, if the dude, the dude from Squirrel Warriors. Yes. He I was just going to say that. Like flat out just said, yeah, dude, I'm busy. I got a lot of orders. Give yep. me your name. I'll call you in about 12 months when you're ready. If you've ever seen this squirrel warriors, dude, it's, Does, is he like that? Like alternative taxidermy where he yes. like takes uh, antlers and puts them on. No, like these are just squirrels. Can you pull that up? So, cause we're not going to wait. We wanted to get these for the studio. They're fucking expensive, but we're also not going to wait. Well, there's two long. on order. We just got to wait for them to come. Oh, we've got we ordered. Them? Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. yeah. I, I don't think we ordered. Them. Yeah. <laughs> so, did, did, that, did that show up on a company credit card purchase? Not, or? Not Maybe just a small deposit. <laughs> yeah. uh, We've got Rocky and Rambo coming. Oh, oh my God. I can't wait to see what this is all about. Uh, it's cool. When you sent this to me, I was like, yes, absolutely. Get these things. What a clever idea. Squirrel Warriors. Squirrel Warriors, right? Oh, so my God. He's got these. Put <laughs> up on that one. That might be the most amazing thing I've seen all day. Uh-oh. Did we lose the... Uh, yeah, we've lost. We've, we've lost, lost connection. Yep. Damn it, Josh. I think it's like you're too old to work technology. Yeah, I pushed the only button that there is to push. I mean, do you want me to describe to the viewers what, <laughs> yeah, what, yes. that, what yeah, we're seeing? Describe it because this is amazing. I can only, I, is, <laughs> yeah. that a, is that a pheasant or, or some type of Here quail? He is, he's riding a rabbit with a bow and arrow. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a taxidermy <laughs> rabbit with a... Squirrel with a bow and arrow shooting it behind and its it, shoulder three quarter style. Tell me how got a quiver on his back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, that is the most amazing thing I've seen. You tell me those wouldn't look great in here. Uh, what's got, the dude look like? There's Click the Shaolin one. Look. Oh my god, it's a ninja <laughs> squirrel. And okay, who has who has that by their fireplace? I if I could get one, yeah. I would. <laughs> wow. 
Uh, I tell you what, some people with the time they have, oh my god! I bet you this dude's making a pretty good living Hell doing yeah. this. That where does he live? Where he can get these? Oh my god, that's amazing! Man, yeah, that is like a, a ninja samurai squirrel in a fighting pose with leather pants. Yeah. Is that all roadkill, or is he out there with a BB? Gun? Hey, look at the gentleman on the snowboard, busting like a mute grab or something. <laughs> oh my <laughs> god! <laughs> wow. What is yeah. this squirrel? Squirrel warriors. Check squirrel out squirrel warriors. warriors, and you will be. He's got a look at the hunter. Oh my god, that's amazing! He's even got the flannel to match. So I figured one of Rocky and one of Rambo, like with the full, uh, you know, oh, belt cool. around and everything. Are you gonna have him like shooting that M sixty from like the hip, oh, like yeah, full. one arm? Yeah. yeah. Well, have you ever seen the the mice on Etsy? No. So if you there's a whole subculture on Etsy that if you go on there and type in like mice taxidermy, yeah, it's kind of the same thing, but like with the little white lab mice. Really? Yeah. Hmm. So a good customer of mine bought one for one of his friends, and it was a mouse doing blow. Like okay. had a little you know table and like a mirror and just a little. I mean, it was wild. It was a Those like that could big. also be cool in here. Yeah. So maybe, maybe that's what I'll get you. Since I didn't get any truck stop treasures that I could okay. fit on my bike, maybe I'll get so you. We're just going to start putting shelves around yeah. the top just so we can start putting our trinkets, knickknacks, yeah. and whatnot. I think it needs to be like a Carol's Pizza. Yes. It's a local log cabin pizza place. It's been here since like the 60s. Yeah. And they have all 1960s, 1970s taxidermy everywhere. It's every squirrel's missing an arm, missing an ear. <laughs> bass with you know fins broken off it's just yeah killing. have you ever looked up like bad taxidermy oh yeah see how <laughs> fucked up some of that shit can so look? my grandfather he was a big avid hunter and he had a taxidermy he, one of the biggest bucks he ever shot now I'll, I'll remember this till the day i die as soon as you go down in his like game room as he called it there was a huge 14 point, point buck and in pennsylvania 14's like massive and uh after about i'd say four years of him getting it it turned into like melted crayon <laughs> like it just looks super bad and then he just never did anything with it and you'd go there for christmas and like there'd just be chunks of hair missing and you know the one antler would like start to droop a little bit it was it was wild, it was wild. i'd like to see the process i mean granted everybody's probably listening to this wanting to know about all his amazing we're, getting, uh, we're, gonna, get like yeah. we're, we're gonna get there how we're did they, getting how did they do topics it? how's it done so so what my limited knowledge is that they have like the mold yeah. and then they like kind of fill things in and like stretch the skin and like get creative with like folding but i don't know that's it's a it's we'll an get, art form when it's done, right. done i mean i know that like there's some of the bigger like shops out there or whatever i think they just toss whatever you bring them and then they just like give you the plastic fish so that's like made kind of and they just airbrush it to make it look like it like yeah that's what a lot of folks do on like especially on the fish kind of things yeah and i know they do that like with sailfish because you can't like keep a lot of those right you know a lot of that stuff's like catch and release so like yeah. oh you got a 60 foot right you know great white here's your here's your statue so which at that point i could just buy those and put the little brass plaque underneath it be it'd like, be cool yeah. it'd be cool to call one of those guys and tell them you get like a bald eagle that you want to <laughs> yeah, bring. Like, I just, how much does it cost i it? just pop this thing <laughs> yeah and see like uh there was a whole thing too where in virginia it's actually illegal to have a bird of prey taxidermied so like you okay. actually have to call the game warden if like a uh, owl dies in your backyard or you know a bald eagle decides to crash land sure. in your house like you can't just keep that and like have a taxidermy it has to be picked up by the game commission to damn you know dispose of somehow so i'm sure there's game wardens that have like yeah. sweet ass offices with I had an owl, birds of prey in them. i had an owl in my backyard for like a year and he almost died yeah <laughs> because <laughs> those things make a tremendous amount of noise don't, all night don't long. be fucking with owls i didn't yeah, they, they, they it's probably why yeah yeah it was wyatt shooting at him with a bb gun no he, he never did it was it came out at night uh he was fast they get loud yeah weird did you ever see their legs their legs yeah no oh, it's, google it we have owl legs <laughs> <laughs> i bet your algorithm is wild <laughs> You have yeah. no idea. Uh, so <laughs> right into knives, then into bourbon. Yeah. Taxidermy, owl's legs. Uh, owl's legs. So now I'm going to have to go back to the hotel and be like, owl's legs, what I'm the telling fuck you. are we? Yeah, do it on their Wi-Fi. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Exactly. Uh, well, now we're like the reason why we're here. So obviously you're well known for basically doing the baddest shit out there, paint-wise. Um, Period. I appreciate that. From 
from the actual quality and execution to the design and creativity. Um, uh, we have all been in this a long fucking time, and I, I've seen your shit all over the place, and I, I don't know of anyone that does it better. Oh, um, I, I appreciate that. But for those who don't know, how, and I mean, I'm kind of curious too. Like, we're fanboy. We are all you didn't, fanboys of your work, dude. <laughs> yeah. How did you get your start? You didn't just start out, you know, and do your first mini truck and lay it out and be like, yep, I'm a fucking badass. Let's move on to the next one. It, it's, it's been a long journey. I mean, I, I tell a lot of my, my good friends and customers that ask me that question. It's like it's it's almost paid in exacto knives and blood almost. Um, you know, had I was very fortunate that I grew up and had a family that was really, you know, kind of pushing me into the art side of the world. Um, you know, I was that little kid at like, you know, the Italian oven, always drawing stuff with crayons on like the, the tablecloths and, you know, all that kind of craziness. And um, by high school, I started really getting more and more involved in the, the car side of the world. But even previous to that, uh, my neighbor was actually a sign painter. So he would do a lot of box trucks and, you know, all the, the plumber guys in the area. And, um, you know, whenever I was about seven years old, I basically wa- went over there with my big wheel and just kind of watched him. Oh, wow. And um, what ended up happening is uh, he would show me how to, you know, here's how you paint an A, you know, and I just paint a bunch of A's on, you know, his little easel that he had. But uh, little did I know he was teaching me basically blocked font, you know, so I learned how to do all of that. And then I would start helping him a little bit. And um, then the vinyl cutter showed up and that pretty much ruined his business overnight. So he uh, started getting more into the, the actual sign business and vinyl and all that stuff. But um, I kind of kept with the paint because I, I really enjoyed that side of the world. Was he doing gilding and stuff like that too um, as well? A little bit, but not much. I mean, the, the downside of Pennsylvania is it's it's really not a, you know, happen in place to get like gold leaf on your doors or stuff like that. But, um, you know, he'd do a couple signs every now and again for like the communities where you'd drive in and they'd have that big giant sign. Yep. And, you know, the letters would be all chiseled out. He would do with some of that stuff. But, um, you know, his bread and butter was just, again, the plumber guys and the, blue collar dudes just rotor rooter yeah, yeah. yeah exactly you know Tow steve's steve's towing you know yeah. um but uh <clears throat> i still focused on the paint side of it and never really got into the the computers and um even to this day i'm kind of i know how to run a vinyl cutter for doing a lot of graphics and logos and doing printers but to me there's nothing better than something that's you know hand painted and you know has that kind of creativity beside it where it's not absolutely perfect and um, for me, it, it just became one of those things where it started snowballing, where a customer that I lettered their truck, oh, hey, man, can you, you know, pinstripe the, the flames that I half as did on my Harley? And all of a sudden it turned into that to can I lay them out and can I paint them? And then all of a sudden I'm, you know, painting and pinstriping every single thing ever. At what age? Um, I started Lucky Strike officially in 2006, but uh, I have work out there that's dated 97, 98. I mean, I'm eight years old at that point, and uh, it's cool. It's rough. So, I mean, I <laughs> I actually saw one of my old customers at Sturgis, and uh, he came up and gave me this big ass hug, and he goes, "Jeremy, hey man, like, did I just get Dude, hugged by yeah. a stranger? You know, like, I kind of felt like I needed an adult for a moment." <laughs> and um, he goes, "You pinstriped my bike in Pittsburgh back in 1998, and it was really great." And I went, "Holy shit!" And he goes, "It's right here." And I went, "What?" And looked at it, and sure as shit, it's That's cool. worn to nothing. Like, it's you can barely see it. That's and, uh, awesome. My signature was Jay Saner. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, there's no denying who did that. <laughs> and uh, I was I was blown away that it was still surviving. That's really and, cool. Um, yeah, it's it's been a, a wild ride. And, um, you know, now, I mean, I look back at my career, and it's been SEMA builds. It's been hot bikes, covers. It's been motorcycles, helmets, signs, paint stuff for you guys. I mean, it, it's been been absolutely a crazy career, and we're just, uh, you know, I feel like I'm finally getting started with the, you know, being happy with what I do. That is cool. So you, I mean, in that era, you must be talking, like, barbed wire tribal stuff. Like, you've come up and been through a lot of different fads and oh styles, yeah right? yeah yeah i mean like the mini truck fad i mean shit i used to x stripe swiss cheese tribal mm-hmm. like a motherfucker ripped um, metal like, oh yeah, yeah yeah i mean it's it's been been crazy seeing the the progression of even just my work um and like how the the industry's going from you know crazy 60 color graphics to single color with a nice little heartbeat and teal kind of shit to that x'd out pinstripe was perfect for a guy that couldn't pull a line though very true it was <laughs> Like, you could knock one out and be like, oh, fuck, I, I can pull little lines like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, it, and I actually saw that one of the first mini trucks I ever painted uh, was on Facebook Marketplace. And uh, 
I was looking at it. I was like, oh, I can't believe I got paid for that. <laughs> and uh, it was it was rough and, you know, clears peeling off because I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. I was 16 years old and, you know, slinging a pancake in my mom's, you know, basement. And uh, yeah. last longer than most GM clear coats. So. <laughs> <laughs> very, very true. Very true. I think even to this day, uh, the house I grew <clears> up in <throat> still has uh, my like Bisqueen paint booth that I, you know, half ass made. And they're like 30 colors of overspray where the, you know, where the, where the screws went through the floor to hold it down. So I'm, well, I'm sure my mom has been super pumped about that. What were you shooting back then? Uh, back then, I used to shoot freaking everything. And, and having my stint at PPG for 12 years, um, I learned a lot about just paint chemistry there. And uh, I look back at some of the stuff I did and, you know, using lacquer reducer and urethane. And, I mean, it's a miracle that some of the paint jobs I've done whenever I was younger Last. haven't just peeled off. So... It's uh yeah back then we were using you know everything from Omni PPG House of Color Sherwin Williams and then just put it all on top of one another once it's dry it should Stack be all right it. yeah, yeah. We're, we're good House of Colors make a better blue but so and so makes a better green pretty and, much yeah. pretty much and, and a lot of times too like you know the buddies would go to the paint <clears throat> store and just buy whatever they wanted and uh, you know here Jeremy yeah. here's a whole box of miscellaneous things yeah. and oh yeah by the way I I didn't get a pea sheet that tells you what products go with what so you just throw a reducer in all of it and you know, kind of generally do a ratio Roll with your dice. fingers and pray for the best. So you were with PPG a long time. What, what was your title there? What was the job? So uh, when I first started, I was just a trainer. And by the time uh, COVID hit and they decided to eliminate uh, pretty much training, uh, I was uh, running a training center in Pittsburgh. So automotive like collision or the custom paint side. So um, I did oh. pretty much strictly automotive, but the custom kind of bleeds into that a lot. Um, so I used to do you know, shit, 5,000 people through a training center to teach them the collision side of the world. Uh, but I would also teach custom paint and pinstriping, um, you know, painted a ton of stuff for their SEMA displays. And, you know, all of us in this room remember the crazy displays that PPG yeah. always had at SEMA. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they shit, were cool. there were times I would not only have a project in there like a motorcycle, but I'd have a canoe that PPG wanted me to paint or guitar. a bicycle, guitar. I mean, PPG ran me through the ringer on things to paint where, you know, if it met a particular theme, you know, here's a set of roller skates. It should paint them. You, paint should, them. Paint, you <laughs> should paint them fine, but make sure they're wild and crazy. And, you know, we don't want them, you know, one color. And, yeah. um, you know, how do you get paint to stick to fake leathers, you know, kind of a challenge. So, I mean, we've, uh, we've painted so much stuff for them and, you know, every show and good guys and everything that, I mean, I think I've painted at least one of everything at this current moment. Wow. Yeah. So through that whole run, I mean, you're burning at both ends. You're oh, yeah. all day long training, teaching, going home, custom paint work. Yep. How is that? How did that work out? And when were you like, I think I could do this full time? Well, and, and I did, again, that, that double candle side of the world for probably every bit of 20 years. Um, like I said, I started Lucky Strike in 06 and never really had that. You know, I, I shouldn't say want or desire, but I, I've always had that where I've always been taught that you need that job that has the 401k and the health care. And, yep. you know, being a Pittsburgh kid, you you always wanted a job at PPG because it's, you know, Pittsburgh. I mean, it stands for Pittsburgh plate glass back in the day. And, um, you know, once I got my job at PPG, I was like, oh, fuck it, man. I'm we're, we're good. I'm going to retire it. from here. Yeah. I've made it. You know, I have a company car. I have a training center. I'm you know, good at what I do. I'm, um, you know, having a good old time. And then, you know, again, COVID kicked in and kicked that out pretty quick. And, um, luckily I did have lucky strike to fall back on, you know, for that. And I mean, really, this is the first time, you know, ever since COVID that, that this is the sole thing I am doing now. And, um, I've always been, you know, that double dip kind of kid where, right. you know, I have a hard time sitting still. Let me ask you when you were doing all of that training on the mainly like you said it bleeds over but mainly collision focused i mean you, they're running through guys through there they're setting up shops they're, i mean they're they're wanting these guys to turn and burn you know mm -hmm. and uh obviously we all have we all have similar backgrounds and have known both sides of the industry and we've seen the products themselves change and not throwing shade at any brand because at the same time we, we know how small the custom industry is to these brands in the grand scheme of things right the collision wags the dog you know it's that's what it is clears gotten softer was there stuff that you were picking up in there it was well, you, you just slid that in there real quick 
Claire's getting soft. Claire's Is there anything soft. that you... <laughs> There's one of those things. It's, How do you fix that? No, well, I'm saying, did, is there... Did anything that you learned while you were teaching a collision-focused mindset that you did were able to pull over into your custom world where you're like, oh, oh shit, that's a that's a quick way for me to do that. And it doesn't hinder the final product. Oh, 100%. And that's a, the hard part is like... Um, you know, again, I could I can kind of speak for PPG because I saw behind that particular curtain. Um, but but like you said, the, the hard part is, is I woke up as a kid wanting to be a custom painter, not a body guy. I didn't want to paint per white caddy bumpers all day. And those are easy to match. aren't they? Exactly. They're, you, you just you just do this. You wave the gun and boom, it's, it's done. Um, but the I, I tell everybody that I work with now, especially like the younger people, um, that, you know, I would teach in a custom class is you almost have to learn the collision basics before you can become a custom painter. Because once you do custom, there is one, no warranty from that paint manufacturer anymore. Even if I use the best of the best products that technically say they have a limited lifetime warranty, but when you're putting 30 mils of metal flake, candy, leaf, oh, yeah. pinstriping, and clear, that, that warranty is out the door. Exactly. Me. And, and that's one of those things where learning the collision side of how far I can push primer, color, clear, all that stuff, and how things need to be prepped correctly and, you know, how long things need to dry, bled just hand over fist into that custom side of the world. Because now, you know, again, I'm putting 14 colors on motorcycles. And, you know, I know that if I can put it on all at the same time, but by the time that shit dries out, it's going to be a raisin, you know, or it's just going to peel off. And it's, it's, it's a huge issue that I think a lot of paint manufacturers, again, don't look at a custom shop or custom paint and give a shit about, you know, and, and that's the, the hard thing that even back in my PPG days, I was trying to get the hierarchy to understand is the only time that PPG deemed they got money from any kind of product was it only had a vibrance label. So vibrance is PPG's, you know, flagship, you know, custom paint. Yeah. But if I use Deltron, on that entire project and made a custom color. To me, that's a custom paint job. But all of that material went back as if I was a collision shop. But if I used $60 worth of Vibrance Flake in a $10,000 material SEMA build, $10,000 went to collision, but $60 went to Vibrance. So that's how PPG, in my opinion, deems that there's no money in custom, even though there is. You know, again, I bought ten thousand dollars of material to paint a dually for SEMA. Right. All that went to collision shields sales. None of it went to custom. Don't you think that should be looked at a little bit like some of the OEs look at like their race cars and things? I mean, they've always spent immense amounts of money on the racetrack trying to win races for cars that they're never gonna sell that race car. Absolutely. For the sole purpose of selling like the entry level, you know, four door sedan. Mm-hmm. And I'm surprised that the paint manufacturers don't look at it that You're way. selling cool. Yeah. Right. What all the top guys are using. And, and that's yeah, but nobody's, I mean, I'm. you know way <clears throat> more than I do, but I would assume none of them are going out there and saying, we want everybody to look at our colors on the GM lot and be like, oh, the PPG's colors are the most vibrant, no pun intended. They're the most, what, that clear from DuPont is the hardest shit ever or whatever. They're trying to like make cost. Like and, and it's, that's it's not a like the the GM's gonna make a badass race car because they want everybody to get excited and go and buy the you know Lumina or whatever right. it is. It's well, my, my point is if you make some badass products and you've got a guy putting something like that out, I, people look at that and they're like, oh, that's what I want to use in my collision shop. And, and that's kind of the, the always been be. that, that battle, right? Is, um, you know, the, the custom side of it is always the flashy, you know, but to the, the people that are making those decisions, like any other big business, they have no idea what it takes to make that helmet or a motorcycle or any of the cars you guys have downstairs. And and that's always been my issue is I think almost all paint manufacturers, PPG, Sherwin, whoever, they're not run by paint people anymore. They're all businessmen. I mean, shit, look at Harley. I think the guy that's running Harley now is from Puma. Yeah. You know, and, and at the end of the day, I'm not saying that guy's a, a bad businessman. He understands business and how to carry the one. But at the end of the day, he doesn't understand, you know, guys like me or again, paint companies understanding what, what custom painters do or, you know, a shop like you guys where you're building incredible vehicles that look amazing, 
in the amount of work and material and things that go into that to them it's it's you guys painted a really fancy camry you know and and again that's just i think the the ignorance of the people that become the shock callers at the end of the day hmm. so and it was it was super frustrating so you know back in the day i i you know used to bang the drum but it, it got to the point where they just beat it out of you and you're just fuck it it's a job you know no, no point in trying to bang your head against the door for no results so and again, not to, to bash PPG. I mean, I still use PPG at my shop just because I know it inside and out. But, you know, the marketing side of the world's always been kind of crazy. And that's, you know, a whole nother issue. And, you know, again, no nobody in the marketing side of really anything in the paint business, in my opinion, understands the custom side and what it means to the collision shops. I you think know? you made a great point. It has to be a huge advantage knowing all the ins and outs there from specifically how you could cheat the system. Oh, knowing, yeah. like, I'm... I'm thinking of work time and when I'm looking at this helmet, you know, a lot of that stuff was hand painted, but if it was, you know, base coat graphics and stuff like that, there's no way you're masking all that shit in a fucking day. Correct. You know, and then you're like, uh, fuck, they say that like 24 hours, you know, but I know that I can run a get away longer. with 36 and yeah. yeah. And I then, mean, you're not doing inner coats on all that shit or anything, are you? No, no. And, and that's one of the, the things is like, I, I understand chemistry really well. Cause where my training center was, was in uh, Pittsburgh and, uh, the, the training center was actually attached to what they call the innovation center in Allison Park, PA. Uh, so that's where the, the actual scientists work on things that you will never see or possibly see five to seven years out. So like I got to talk to a lot of guys that would have degrees seven times over in, you know, molecular chemistry, chemical craziness. And uh, I would talk to some of those guys where, again, their reading levels so much above mine, but they would say, oh, yeah, well, if you do this hardener with this product, you'll get this result. But if you do it with this, even though it says you can do it, it'll also do this. And that's where retaining a lot of that information really started to help. And again, teaching it every day. I mean, I, it, I could read you a pea sheet from any product damn near and still know exactly what the dry times are, how many coats, what the fluid tip is, you know, just all the way through. And, um, you know, it, it got to be again, back of my hand kind of stuff. So yeah. how many times did you learn the hard way on that? <laughs> Shit, I still <laughs> learn the hard way. <laughs> so, um, it, it gets pretty crazy, especially with, uh, you know, the, even in the car business, you know, everybody waits to the last minute to get stuff painted, you know, and Hey, I need to have this in, in the box and overnight. And you're pushing, pushing, pushing. Exactly. And, and that's always been the, the battle with, with painters and shops and builders. And, you know, all that is, is the, the time it takes to make something dry correctly, where you give it to a customer that they're not going to instantly have stone chips when they try to, you know, ride it to Sturgis or whatever. But uh, there's, there's been a couple of times where, um, you know, something just fails epically because I was either rushing or I tried to cheat the system. Um, you know, there's been a lot of times where I've had... Uh, you know, the need for a torpedo heater that you just kind of <laughs> tuck in the booth and you just crank that thing to 11 and there's fire cool. shooting out of the it's end. Like a, it's like a little extra bake, bake booth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, um, you know, sometimes you're, you're just doing the painter's prayer of, you know, please don't let this thing blow up in my face. And uh, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So, but yeah, there's, painter's there's prayer. I've yeah. heard that one before. It's pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah. The painter's prayer of God damn. I hope this doesn't fuck me in the end. <laughs> so, <laughs> But yeah, it's, uh, you know, yeah, nowadays I, I strictly kind of do motorcycles and helmets. So I, I do have a little bit more lead time, right. um, you know, and having things dry cause I'm working on other pieces or parts, but, uh, back in the SEMA days, I mean, Jesus Christ, there were, there were days where I had a week to paint a dually that had to be put back on the chassis that was painted last week. And you know, you're it's crazy. You're running bolts in and you're just watching the clear, like mushroom around, you know, the, <laughs> the old wool pad and you can see the clear just kind of <laughs> yeah, waving up. You're like, Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have the hose beside you. You're like, I'm gonna cool this down real quick. You know? So, um, Dude, but for, yeah. for an artist, that's crazy. Like you have such, there's such a risk there, you know, like any other artist, right? You're, you're drawing something, you're painting something, you're doing something on like graphic design. There isn't that risk of mass failure. Like everything you do, the last process that you have, you have to clear it all, mm -hmm. right? You never know if it's just going to go to shit. Yeah. Right. So you, all your hard work, you spent all those hours, there's always a risk. Well, then even after you clear it, you got to start sanding on it again. 
Well, yeah, and then there's that. Right? If it, yep. if it, <laughs> and then burn, you gotta burn. start buffing right. on it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tell put it together and not chip it. Or <laughs> yeah. so yeah, there's there's four more steps for that to get. <laughs> fucked well, the up. good part, are you putting are you putting <laughs> yeah. the tins and shit back on the bikes? Um, sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not. Um, I'm I'm very lucky <clears throat> that a lot of my customers will do their own assembly. Um, and even then, that that creates a whole other, you know, nightmarish situation where, you know, I have to box stuff up and mm-hmm. ship it to whoever because uh, right now I'm very fortunate that I don't have a lot of local customers um, so everything gets shipped to me um, like the the Barbie build that uh, we talked about earlier I mean that whole entire bike was brought to me from Dallas and everything had to be shipped back so you know there's 175 parts that were Cerakoted there's you know 30 parts that were painted and custom graphic and leafed and everything and you know pretty soon all of a sudden you, you're relying on a FedEx man that doesn't yep. give two shits about what's in that and box. Punt it down the stairs. And uh, yeah, and, and there's a lot of times where it becomes a, a sleepless night going, I just shipped something I have 72 hours, and and I'm hoping that this guy doesn't run it with a box truck and accidentally backs over the box. Dude, that, that's got to be so nerve-wracking. Where were we? Oh, we we're back? We, he was talking about the Barbie bike. Yeah, we were bike. talking about the Barbie bike, oh, and there oh, it is. Yeah, yeah there, there is the Barbie bike. So that that is the bike we, uh, one of, uh, I guess, three that we did for uh, Sturgis. Uh, this year so that that was uh lauren and jake swanson in dallas texas and uh that bike there we did all the cerakote uh did all the paint color match frames smoothed everything um you know cerakoted and built the rotors i mean i I think i ended up cerakoting almost 170 parts uh for that bike um you know and smoothed like i said the frame and all the welds got grounded and body worked so and, bitch. Um, you know that that gas tank is a neat cut one-off tank from uh, henry at steadfast so I had nice. to had to blackmail my man Henry to get me a tank. As but, busy uh, as Henry is, you're able to slide some stuff in there and see, uh, twist I, his, his hands and yeah. everything. <laughs> he, he does, so I, I kind of bust Henry's balls a lot because, uh, you know, I've known Henry forever, and um, I, I tell him he's my my bearded brother I wish I had. But, um, you know, I, I kind of relied on him a lot for some of these uh, these performance baggers. But, oh, in fact, if you see the – in fact, we'll, we'll talk about that one, but if you go oh. back, the white – yep, that one, that Rogue Glide. So – that one uh, is for a good friend of mine, Millhouse from uh, Thundermax, and um, things like of Josh Shaw flames right there. Yeah, so th- so that bike good pictures lips. don't do that justice because that's like uh, gold flake uh, flames with a gold pearl white, and um, did that for uh, Daytona debut, and um, whenever uh, yeah you brought up you know trial by fire kind of thing, um, I was rushing that bike because I had to do two other ones also for Daytona. And uh, my buddy Millhouse lives in Tennessee, so he was going to meet me in uh, uh, Bristol, Tennessee. So I had kind of a little crazy date to have all this done, so I was kind of rushing it in the middle of winter. Didn't have heat in the shop just yet, so I was relying on, you know, trusty torpedo heater. And um, I didn't necessarily have the time to clear the pearl white, so I masked all the flames off, sprayed everything, looked great. Did my first coat of clear on it to kind of bury all the graphics before pinstripe and it tape tracked everything Mm. like where you didn't see it uncleared but whenever you held it in the light and like kind of tilted it you saw every single seam so i had to back mask all of the gold flames respray all the pearl white and make it all kind of match again and i think i had to redo the front fender gas tank fairing tour pack lid tour pack in the saddlebag bottoms Damn. So yeah, it was pretty simple. Fix. That's that's yeah, exactly. hard. Yeah, yeah, you know, with the, the the masking tape time, the masking tape, and <clears> I mean, it was it was a, a wild ride. And, How was uh, your temper? Are you a guy with like a <laughs> wicked temper? Is that thrown, uh, dude? Yeah. If that was me, that'd be game over. It, uh, yeah, it, let's put it this way: it depends on who you ask. You if wouldn't you ask, be patient with it. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, that that particular one. Um, there, there is times where I'm, I do get a little angry, but luckily I work with myself, so I really only get to yell at one person. Um, but if you ask my girlfriend, she'll probably tell you I'm a little high strung and yeah. you know want to want to burn the place down every now and again. But um, it, it just gets to a point where you know once it happens, it is what it is. You got to fix it, it and just get it done. And um, that one, like I said, looks so good. It 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 turned out awesome and it looks absolutely sick. Um, it's got red carbon BST wheels that we made a custom candy red for. Um, so the wheels are actually uh, full carbon with uh, the candy on them, and um, it's that that bike just turned out awesome. Dude, you I, 
you're working hard on selling me. I think you've I think you've gotten there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I even let you ride my I bike. Know. I didn't think I, I had to sell you anymore. After riding, I mean, I'm it just you <laughs> might get the opportunity to paint a bike for Josh. Me, me and Josh were just talking. What was it Saturday? And he's showing me pictures of he likes the like cholo style, yeah, like big apes, yep. big sweeping fender, hammered on the ground, yeah, the what the fishtail tips and yeah. all that. Yeah, yep. we were talking about paint on that, but after riding his, seeing these, I yeah, and that that's the. The dash for Millhouse's bike, so I did a custom <laughs> nice. Millhouse. Um, nice. So it looks like uh, Jesus, because uh, Millhouse Millhouse is performance Jesus. What got you into the whole like character thing? Um, I, I think what it is is, uh, you know, it's it's kind of that I grew up with cartoons, you know, a lot yeah. and watching every every cartoon ever, and I, everybody that I'm seeming to paint for is kind of in the same age range where you know I'll bring up a reference of The Simpsons or you know, South Park or, you know, I did one that uh, a buddy of mine has on his helmets of Roadrunner, you know? So, I mean, I've always enjoyed that kind of artwork side of it. And then cartoons became digital as well yep. and nobody draws anything. So I think it's just that, that era that I grew up in, you know, really is the the part that I enjoy. And um, then we also did a, a custom helmet to match uh, mill houses. I think it might be up a little bit. Yep. That one. So we did the the same graphic, and then I sent it out to uh, my buddy Charles Armstrong um, in Arizona, and he did a shock G on the top. And uh, so it's do the hump, grab him in the biscuits, and there's shock G. Oh, you shit. Know, can't go wrong with some digital underground. Dude, so that's, that's, a, that's a whole, whole other talent there. Yeah, so I, I don't get into airbrush portraits, so I, I kind of farm that out because I'm, I'm a firm believer of if you're good at everything, that's great but I'd rather be great at something and yep. decent at others. And um, Charles is one of those guys that his airbrushing is Next level. way better than I will ever get to. So it's like, cool. I'll, uh, I'll send him, you know, airbrush portraits and then I'll do the rest of the, the graphics or pinstriping or whatever. So it, it takes a team to, to really make some crazy, you know, artwork and graphics and bikes and stuff. Dude, that's awesome. You don't hear about that a lot in like the paint industry, you know, for us building cars, you bounce some things around and it's the same kind of mentality, right? If mm -hmm. you, you got to do everything. Yeah. Yep. If you're going to do like we can do an interior probably, but it wouldn't be the best. Yeah. There's guys who are the best. So why not? You're like, yep. Get it to them. Yeah. And I'm, I'm the type of guy that I would rather have a good group of people around me helping me than again, try to do some half-ass bullshit. That's going to look right. terrible whenever my name's on it. Um, but I also am the type that I don't have that arrogance about me that I won't shout Charles out for, you know, doing that airbrush work for me, you know. And um, for me, I'd rather have a great outcome with a right. bunch of homies and friends that help me out than me trying to struggle through it or whatever, you know. And that's why I, I rely a lot on Henry with the, the metal fabrication if I ever need it. I got a MIG welder that I can fill holes and, you know, yeah. do simple shit, but I'm not making not a Henry. double reverse radius, you know, <laughs> gas tank filler. Turn is it this up hot enough, you probably could. <laughs> <laughs> is this shit yeah. for your bike? Uh, yes, yeah. So that's the the soft tail that we finished up for uh, for Daytona this year, also known as Manic. So, yeah, Henry did uh, all the, the metal work on the gas tank and the bags and uh, just absolutely killed it. So everything that you see there is uh, like a floating panel. So on the side of the tank? Yeah, and on the, the top of the saddlebag. Okay. So they look like they're floating and... Um, yeah, right there's the the side of the tank. Is it just like press into some grommets or something? Yeah, so there's uh like two little uh, struts that are bolted into the tank, and then I just have them uh, double sided taped on. So okay. in case something ever happens, I can get them remade or gotcha. whatever. But uh, yeah, yeah. So manic manic turned into a whole whole giant disaster of fuckery. <laughs> so yeah, if you uh, so there's me doing a burnout on it. Yep. So I, I destroyed a tire in Daytona, and there's only one way to send it to, to the speed gods. So <laughs> I went to, to my local Harley dealer and just annihilated the tire in front of the, the whole service department, <laughs> and all those guys had a, had a good old time. So we shot some pictures and some video with uh, their, their marketing guy. But yeah, no worries, that's going to come up and take out a bag? <laughs> I mean... Bag offender. <laughs> so so every, every bike I do gets a name, uh, essentially, so... Um, I built this bike during COVID. So I actually <clears throat> bought the bike in 2020 and uh, flew out to House of Harley in Milwaukee and rode the bike back with Henry when he bought his road glide and um, had the intention of just quick flip bike. I got a good price for it. And then COVID hit and had nothing to do with myself. And instead of going insane and, you know, 
losing my mind, I decided to do my first frame off job. So I've never done a bike for myself that we actually pulled everything apart, painted the frame and all that. And then as you know, we all know COVID just kept going and going and going, going, um, turned into doing full motor, smooth frame, got rid of tons of welds. I mean, it, it's by far the best and the biggest bike I've ever done. And, um, you know, it's got a 131 full dark horse bottom end. I mean, the thing is a rocket ship to ride, but, um, you know, it just, it just turned on its life of its own and, um, it started giving me problems and that's about the time I was trying to figure out a name for it. And, um, I was like, man, this thing is driving me fucking insane. (laughs) And, um, one of my, my favorite bands actually had a song called manic and I was listening to it in the shop one day and I'm like, perfect. That's, that's the name for it. And um, it currently is missing the entire back half. And it's sitting at uh, Justin's shop, it's, the, it's, the guy that was with me yesterday. It's still fucking with you. <laughs> oh, dude, it, it's, it's, it's just, this is a family-friendly podcast. So we'll, we'll say really. it's, I mean, it's, it's gently fucking me hard. So, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but, you know, we, we all know how it is with, like, custom parts and bikes. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's a couple things, you know, all kind of snowballed. And, uh, like, I had a too soft of a shock on it. And, you know, I just bought whatever was in stock because I didn't want to wait for eight weeks before Olin sent me a, a shock. So I found one in stock at a customer's uh, shop, but it was intended for like somebody that's 175 pounds. Well, you put 275 of me and 125 of my girlfriend and all of a sudden the whole entire back end is just riding on the tire. So it, like I said, chewed that tire up in Daytona um, and then went out to California for the Born Free show. And had some uh, some trailer issues, and uh, it got damaged in the trailer, yeah. trailering it out because wow. we fucked up a lot of stuff in the trailer. Yeah. For oh, yeah. years. Yeah, I think we all have at this <laughs> yeah. point, right? I Bikes mean, it's, are tough too. And yeah, just, and 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 with that one, I mean, it it just like I said, it, it was just a whole bunch of things kind of snowballed, and then uh, to, to replace the shock on that soft tail, you essentially have to take the whole back end off anyway. So, um, like I said, it's sitting at Justin's shop right now, and he's going to machine a couple different pieces we want to change up, and then. Uh, and then also I'll end up fixing the damage that it incurred in the, the trailer. But are uh, you starting with all brand new bikes on these? Or are you getting older Dinas or um, it, it all I don't depends. know enough about the bike world yet, but yeah, I mean, it, it all depends. Typically a lot of my customers will have a newer, newer style bikes. Um, but right now, like the, the performance Dyna scene is, is gaining a lot of traction. So I'll still get um, bikes from, you know, let's say eighties and up um, right now, Harley FXRs are going FXRs crazy. Are- yeah, and I mean, I, I have guys, um, in fact, I think if you go up, I, I finished it for the shop in uh, Florida. Uh, keep going, keep going. Uh, maybe I didn't post it yet then. But uh, it was a uh, Dyna for uh, Manic Motorsports in Florida, and uh, that bike spent its entire life in Florida. And when he sent me all those parts, like you flip the, the fenders upside down, and it's just rotten. Mess. Yeah, so, I mean, we had to, to blast everything and, you know, fix pinholes and, you know, re kind of weld some stuff that was starting to come apart just from living in, you know, a place like Florida. So, um, but, you know, we've also done a lot of restorations. Um, you know, I did a 56 Indian. Um, that, that customer just sent all the parts, and we had to do all the stripping, all the blasting, rebody work, everything. Um, just to make it back to, to factory. So, I mean, we'll we'll pretty much paint all of it if the, the, the price is right and the customers are willing. So. Are the customers coming to you with the designs, or is it just a, I love your shit, do something cool? Um, I think it's a little bit of, of both. Um, I do get a lot of customers that want to be – more involved just because it's you know their their baby right um which you know by at that point i'm i'm completely down for it a lot of times we give uh renderings you know so a customer will understand kind of what it's going to look like um just so that they're not you know i guess left in the dark but I, I do get a lot of customers that are like i love everything you do here's my color palette here's the my favorite bike you've done you know if you kind of do it something like this i'll be happy you know send me a bill and and we're good but, you know, like right there is an FXR we did for uh, Hoffman Designs cool. and, um, you know, kind of gave it some like, uh, you know, vintage style stripes. But, you know, like that rear fender, we had to restructure that hole inside because back in I think his is a 86, I want to say. Um, but back then it was just a single sheet metal fender. And uh, the way those bags bolt, it just buckled that whole entire section. So we actually had to cut a plate and weld it in to kind of restructure that a little bit just because the metal was so Basically degraded. Basically struts on it. Yeah. So. What's yeah. your preference when a customer comes to you and is just That's like. right up your alley there. Do your thing? Or do you like <clears throat> some input? I, I do like some input because, um, 
you know, I'm, I'm more of an extreme kind of custom painter in my personal opinion. I mean, you look at my personal bikes other than Manic, that was a kind of a simple two-tone. But, um, you know, I, I'd rather have a customer give me, you know, a general idea. You know, again, what colors do you like? Um, you know, what what style of graphic are you kind of after? That's and then I can I can kind of tailor it to it. Yeah, so there, there's a, one of my homies, uh, Jetty. Uh, he's one of the guys that we rode to, to Sturgis with. That's a dyno, right? Yep, yeah, so that's uh, known as Money Pit 2.0 because uh, the year, I think it was PPG Street Ball theme, we actually did that bike, and it was brown and blue. And then he uh, decided to change it up. So that's another one that has, like, smooth frame, custom painted wheels, um, you know, body worked everything to make sure it all fit. So you brought some fairly serious hardware into Sturgis. Yeah. Year. I mean, you're not, yeah, you're not fucking around when you roll in there. Yeah. I mean, typically when it comes to like the, the main rallies, you know, Daytona being the first one and uh, Sturgis being mid year. Um, typically I usually try to bring about two to four, you know, new builds, um, whether they be mine or customers. Um, you know, I'm fortunate that I do a lot of work for like, uh, the performance bagger side for, uh, Hoffman designs. So typically he always has something new that he wants to, to paint or debut. Um, I also do a lot of work for clockworks, you know, who's a, who's a, you know, family friend at this point. He's an um, awesome dude. Yeah. Brian's Brian's the salt. He is right earth. there. Yep. So that's whenever I did the roof of his, uh, his galaxy. So we, we did a little rider roof and, uh, he was standing there just watching me and I'm like, Fuck it. Come here, Brian. I'm going to show you how to engine turn. So I've always <laughs> wondered about that. When you engine turn, are you using a pounce pad and twisting it, or do you so do you use a you know, some sort of orbital? So with um, it depends on the leaf. Um, a lot of times when I do silver leaf, it's aluminum, so I can get away with sandpaper and, and in this case, a drill. Yep. Um, so all that that end is on the drill is a uh, bowl sander. So whenever uh, you know people would make wood bowls, they would need to sand that radius. Mm -hmm. So that foam gives just enough to to follow that radius. Well, that foam when you're vertical gives just enough pressure where you're not like full tilt down hard, and that's a piece of five thousand grit sandpaper and it's sanding that circle. And um, but whenever I use real gold leaf, I can't do that. It's the the gold's too soft. Just, yeah. And it'll just tear it off. Velvet or... Yep. Yeah, velvet with like a cotton ball or sometimes I'll get real lazy and I'll just use my thumb and just, you know, kind of quarter inch it. That's what he's going to do on your bike. Hell yeah. When, when's Daytona? Uh, so there's two Daytonas. There's October and then there's March. That's good. But there are two Daytonas? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. They're both in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that that's got that was that, the timing on that was. I knew spot that was on. coming. <laughs> that's got your name written all over. I know. It. I'm trying to think if we can have it done by Daytona. Yeah, yeah, we can. <laughs> if you if you get it done, mock up all the parts and make sure everything's good. If I get it by December, typically that's when things start going off the rails, all right. and we can typically get things done. So, and especially with it being only a soft tail, I mean, shit, there's six parts unless you want me to paint your frame and get real dumb no what sure. do you think i'm not, not gonna do the what, tank what color i want to i want to get into your head and extract the vision me Ooh. me and jeremy were talking about it earlier we're gonna go two ways here we're gonna There's do kind of like a recreation of old panhead probably like some some of phil's favorite color blue yeah and tan no no tan plaid it's, it's, it's going to be a surprise. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it, it. Let's put it this way. I enjoy painting like vintage style paint jobs, but with modern, nice colors. Okay. So like, uh, you know, we're, you guys are all familiar with like that olive green that Harley always had back in like the early 30s. Mm -hmm. So I made... the shooter. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah, the board track bikes. Bike. Yeah. Fucking so, so ever. That's right. I figured have you ever going seen, have you OD ever seen green. my tattoo on my leg? No. Oh, shit. It's a giant board tracker. And then I got Valentino Rossi on the other leg because, you know. Now, now, all right. We're, I think this is going to be a surprise. I think it would serve you well, Josh, cool. yeah. to just let Jeremy run with it. I'm, I'm with I'm Just <laughs> give it to him. Yeah. Don't, don't tell him anything. Don't give him any of your ideas. Uh, if that, in that case, let's paint your frame. Let's yeah. get real, real silly. <laughs> okay. I don't want to do a motor off. Uh, so, but, um, yeah, like that, that bike was for Clockworks. Um you know, and they're, uh, they're one, one salesman. So we did like the cartoon on the dash. Shit. So, what am I doing? Yeah. Yeah. Those are all the, the clockwork fenders and everything. So, I mean, those, like I said, clockworks and Brian and Vanessa, I mean, those guys are our family. So I love them guys to death. That's lay frame swing arm. Got on That's that. French. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> the frame. 
So, but like I'm we, super impressed that this one's paying attention with all these shiny objects going I know, over here. I am taking them in, but I'm, I'm listening. But yeah, like I said, like so that one, um, you know, Steve, he uh, he always has a cowboy hat on, so we we called his bike the Cowboy Vicla. But he's also Irish, which is is kind of a a I weird weird mashup. So, so yeah, we did like a Lucky weird charms, Lucky Charms yeah. with a with a six shooter. <laughs> So, but, uh, yeah, and it's... Could me and Jared describe the character that you're going to paint on Josh's bike? A hundred percent. Yes. <laughs> Damn it. That's going to be awesome, <laughs> oh, That's going to be so good. <laughs> I mean, it, some of the, the characters I get requested for is, like, it hurts my brain when I get some customers' <laughs> ideas. And um, What would it be? I haven't honed it in yet. It just, the idea came to me, and it's going to be like a 30-page dissertation on... <laughs> 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 I cannot wait. Can it be somewhat hidden ish? Oh, no, yeah, we're putting like on the center on the tank. Or yeah. Put it on the old bag. No, don't put it on the tank. So, lucky number six, is that what you call your bike? Yeah. So, um, lucky number six, uh, that's actually my sixth bike I've built for myself uh, with the help of, you know, a bunch of really good friends again. I'm, I'm a team player. So, like, you know, Clockworks helped me out getting a bunch of parts, and Hoffman, you know, hooked me up with the, the carbon fiber. And then uh, back home, I have a really good friend who's actually now a service manager for the dealership I bought the bike from. He's helped me out tons and tons, uh, you know, building the bike because I'm, I could, again, probably build a motor if I wanted to, but I just would trust a master certified Harley tech to do it better than me. So probably gonna end up better. And that's kind of where I'm at. Especially so, on uh, road tours. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that, that bike there has been built since 2009. And um, uh, this trip, I'll be almost to 50,000 miles on it since 2019. And um, when did you paint it? Uh, I painted at the end of 19. Okay. So it was debuted and Daytona 420. Do you think, was that bike for you like a game changer? Um, I think it was um, in a lot of respect just because it was prior to the the trend of the performance baggers. It was just kind of catching on. Um, so me, um, you know, good friend, uh Kyle and uh, another good painter in Dallas and his name's Jace. Um, those two and myself were like kind of the first ones to really go deep into a performance bagger where, you know, we were putting Olins on it and painting everything and doing carbon fiber and a lot of that stuff. And, um, you know, I'm, I enjoyed that paint job the most just because I had no real say, if you will, because I drew that idea on a napkin at a bar with a customer for his actual bike and then he sobered up and kind of went more traditional. <laughs> and uh, I was still kind of like, fuck yeah, yeah that's you gotta, be great. You gotta get, that's why you got to get the drinking? deposit that <laughs> night. Man. So, yeah, the, the, so the like deposit still went. Or, yeah. <laughs> so, so I... <laughs> Acid, mushrooms. So I really want to do one of those ayahuasca trips, you know? Yeah, like I think I it'd be a bundle that. of fun. Yeah. Um, but that one was, uh, again, just double Tito's all night. And okay. I, mean, I, was, I was feeling pretty good. But, um, again, like, I, I think I still even have the bar napkin. I mean, it was just a shitty Sharpie pen marked out, you know, kind of Tron looking thing. And then, um, back then I kind of got real burnt out with like, everybody was doing flake and candy and panels. And mm -hmm. I just got real tired with it and just kind of was like, what have I not done personally or what haven't I seen? And, um, one was kind of this like street graffiti art. Yeah. yeah. Speed it's, racer meets it. Tron meets, you know, whatever and uh all of those colors are solid like there's not any pearl there's not any flake i left a ton of the carbon fiber sticking out and then um you know did the the big gold leaf number sixes because like i said that's my uh my i was looking at it done. in detail yesterday and today or if that had to be a masking fucking nightmare so i i cheated a lot on that bike actually i i hand painted a lot of those things um where i didn't have to mask too uh, much that's not um, cheating i mean i that's the harder way <laughs> sometimes um <laughs> I'm fortunate that I, I'm good at it. So I, I just kind of masked and sprayed, I think, the medium blue, the purple, the pink, and then uh, the lime green just because it wouldn't cover where the shit. Uh, over all the, the silvers dark. by hand then. Yeah, so all the silver, all the, the two colors of purple, the two colors of blue, um, a lot of that I would, like, mask off the, the kind of border and then just, you know, pinstripe and brush it all out just so it wouldn't bleed into the other colors. But you know. How it fucked up is your... good, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, a, a lot of clear. I mean... That's the, the, you know, cheat code that a lot of people don't understand is like, I might have brushed all of my helmet, but as soon as you clear over top of that, it fills all of those low spots in, and then you sand all that texture out, re-clear it, it'll look like a sticker. So, the cheat code is what I call it. Hmm. That bike just did it for me, man, because looking at it, if, 
it reminds me of like it's what one of you those, would have in your pocket. Well, yeah, that. But <laughs> at the same time, it's like one of those things that would come to info at Roadster Shop, where somebody has this idea for like a ninety-seven Grand Am they want to do that they want to convert it to rear-wheel drive <laughs> and this and that and, and all these ideas that you're like, no, none of that would work. Yeah, because if you laid that out on paper, like. I want to do a bagger. I want to make it high performance and lift it instead of slam it. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of carbon fiber. Let's do some gold leaf over the carbon fiber and then neon colors. You'd be like, you're fucking crazy. Yeah. It 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 never works. And in fact, if you go down a little bit, I painted a strider for a customer because he liked my bike. Well, his son go up, 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 and then over to the left. Keep going. I love that white and blue helmet. Keep going. Mm -hmm. Keep going. One more right there. So his son saw That's my cool. bike in uh, I think it was Sturgis last year and uh, was like my son has said nothing about a paint job other than your motorcycle and he's like he loved it so much he goes we bought him his first strider and he goes I don't even care how much it costs he goes it just has to look like your your lucky number six <laughs> so uh, I, I painted it just like uh, my lucky number six and now this this little kid's got a crazy that's, custom that's painted cool. strider so and yeah. then we had to do the lucky strike logo on the the swing arm part so little dude's got a strider that's probably worth more than most that's awesome kids bmx bikes <laughs> yeah, my, so. my son is probably one of your biggest fans he wants everything that he owns there's a picture of something you've painted that he wants it to look like yeah that that's he brings awesome. up and then he's he got getting into, into graffiti right? yeah he get into graffiti so he's, he's fucking up the driveway he tags <laughs> he tags everything and we get him just a little like four by four sheets of plywood at home depot mm-hmm. so that he can you know do his little graffiti work but then I'll come home from work and there's like a sizable mature tree <laughs> that's pretty <laughs> prominently placed in the front yard, you know, and it is just covered in fucking spray paint. That's fantastic. <laughs> so you want to be pissed because you're like, dude, I mean, I, I haven't attempted to get it off. I don't know how yeah. you would. I don't know. How do you even approach that? How do you get? You probably spray thinner. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. But then you probably kill the tree and it right. like have a section eaten out of it. But it's everywhere. I mean, it's. Uh, He's got a little buddy who's uh, Bobby. Is his name. His dad is actually uh, Bob Bleed. Do you remember yeah. the, uh, Bob Bleed? The, he, a hot rod dude. A uh, cool fucking guy. And the two of them, they've clicked, these two kids, with hot rod builder dads. And all they do is tag everything. So I come home, and they like, he's over. And we, I built him a skate ramp. And it's tagged, the whole fucking thing. Oh, like, yeah. That's fantastic. Tagged. I'm like, dude, it was, I painted it brown so it kind of blended in because it's not supposed to be there. Yeah. And the HOA is <laughs> probably not super stoked. And now you just graffiti the whole thing. That's, like, so is he doing just full Wyatt or has he got no, like he, a they, fun graffiti? Yeah, thing? they get it. It's a big thing with these. They get yeah. it. They have books and they, they have like their, ta- they're like handles, I guess you'd call yep. them. They're like tag name. And there's, it's just like razor. <laughs> That's <right>? fantastic. <laughs> yeah. It's That's pretty, fantastic. Is it RZR? No. It's R A Z O R. Really? Yeah. So, so to, to, and maybe I'll have to have this talk with Wyatt. He'll have to do something real short. So when he turns 16, like I did, it's quick in and out. In and out. Yeah. Because if you, <laughs> you want to be there real, all day. No, no, the, you will get arrested as I learned whenever I was 16. So it, uh, yeah, tagging's fun, but yeah. do it smart. So did you just like, why W Gerber and then your birthday? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Address. Your social social thing. security yeah. number. <laughs> It'd be perfect. <laughs> Uh, so it's like but, fucking Mikulich, we were in uh, Louisville. We are putting stickers on cars. Like, dude, they're Roadster Shop stickers. It's got our website on it. Slaps one on the back of a cop car and goes running down the street. <laughs> yeah, like, I was there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty sure he's going to know who did it and the website with an email. And oh, dude, number. can you believe yeah. I got that cop car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, buses. He told him who did it. Yeah. yeah, buses in Vegas. I mean, all that, all that stuff. I, I think I went through 500 <clears throat> stickers in my, you know, two years worth of SEMA. And uh, you always got to tag all that stuff. Yeah. yeah, the sticker game got out of control. It just we were got just fucking talk- hit today. We were talking about it today. We had to uh, go pick something up at the rings shop. Oh, are you serious? Those stickers fucking suck, yeah. too. Well, that's what I'm getting at. Because this time around, they put it on the fucking glass. Thank, thank you, Jim, for doing that. Like a normal sticker. Last time around, they bought the cheapest ass fucking stickers. Yeah, like the print in your own printer. Yeah. Type. Oh, the ones that like tear real <laughs> just bad. Just turn to paper and, paper and you can't yeah. get them off. Yeah. But as soon as... it. As soon as water hits them or the sun hits them, they become a permanent feature of your vehicle. <laughs> it's the best glue, <laughs> worst in, sticker. Right. Yeah, it's a 2011 For, truck. I think it. They put the <laughs> stickers on in probably 2012. They're still there. Yeah, all over the truck. That's amazing. I mean, I put a sticker on your your 
thing. So I mean, and yeah. signed it. Yeah. yeah, that's like a place where stickers go. Yeah, I, right. I, I personally like the one of Randy Borcharding the best. I still need to get one of those from him. <laughs> Isn't that? A, is that? Do you know much about that? Is that actually him? Okay, so what's the story with that? I I know Randy and all them guys super well in Houston yeah. and uh, love them guys to death. But supposedly, and again, I hope I'm not talking out of turn for Randy, but supposedly he was a male model that would do hands and like just upper chest thing. Okay. So <laughs> I wouldn't mind, I wouldn't mind getting some hands and upper chest. Yeah. Thing. Right. Yeah. So, so like I have a couple pictures of him that upper like chest. I found when I was in Houston and visited a shop that he has like of him and Jen when they were like super young and like he is full blown eighties porn star. Like when you walk past the picture in the hallway, it should make the like, you know, noise. And, um, yeah, I, I, Randy, when you ask him about it, he just kind of like shakes his head and like kind of rolls his eyes and smiles and then does this like weird hand thing and walks away. So, <laughs> so does he, he doesn't own it then? Is he okay with that? Is that, I, is that an okay thing for that to live there? I, I, one, if it's my personal opinion, it should be bigger. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the size of that Chevelle <laughs> on yeah. the wall behind you. If, if I, if I ever find, cause I want to say Noel uh, is the one that printed them. I'm going to try to get the original artwork and I want to do t shirts. I'd wear that. It'd be pretty solid. Right? Yeah. I, I yeah. think everybody would. Um, what would Randy do? <laughs> but but at the same time, he did a, a set of Yetis for me. And I think he was giving them to customers, uh, I think in Detroit. And uh, the, the saying on it was finish deep because he's a painter, right? You know, you buff it, you get that nice deep hmm. look. So I feel like he should he's, just lean into this kind of seems like he is yeah. embrace yeah. seems like he is that, that's what i'm saying so i, I huh. think it i think it's perfectly fine and and i need a set of set of those stickers so every time i call he calls me it's a, a picture of him just 1980s mullet now beautiful. we're gonna have to get a sticker that says finish deep and put it right there above yeah. Yeah. we picture. need to get him out of here yeah yeah let yeah him, let him write that underneath it yeah Rand, randy's awesome so I, I love those guys too yeah, he's a good dude yeah so that's that's the wild thing about this career I've had is I've been in the the car side forever and the motorcycle side so I kind of get to to be happy in in both worlds whenever it comes to artwork and who I do it for and all that fun stuff. Who's the bigger group of degenerates? Ooh, that's a good question. I, I want I want to say motorcycle guys um, just because it's a lot easier to to move a motorcycle than a car, and it's not you know. <laughs> Fifty thousand dollars worth of damage when you're trash and you you know tip your bike over in a parking lot instead of doing donuts and you wrap it around a telephone pole. But that's easy, motorcycle guys, dude. There's yeah. no degenerates left in hot rodding. I mean, we were at They're fucking Columbus. The parking lot was shut down at fucking ten o'clock. At the host yeah. hotel? Yes. That's a, that's a shame. And there's, and then all the young guys that are coming up, like no, they don't want to like hang and get like hammered. Yeah. Me and Jeremy are out there drinking by ourselves. Shit, the, the last year Maybe in Columbus. Year too. Nobody liked you. You think that's, that's what it was? I, it's a possibility. It sounds like just, tonight's a day of night of hurtful fucking statements. He gave that's you a fucking is. compliment. It was a legit compliment. <laughs> yeah. You're so high right now, I got to knock you down a few levels. I don't want you walking out of here with a big Phil's, fucking head. Phil's taking my place. Phil's, I'm giving you Because Jeremy said one nice thing. I got, I got high on up. the hog. <laughs> that's the one nice thing he's ever said. You're welcome. Fuck. Yeah, the... The hot red world probably needs a few more. I think it, we need a few fights and and a little bit, a couple hours longer drinking. And and I agree because like the the last time I was in Columbus, I was giving people hot rod like hot laps in one of Henry's roadsters. So Henry, and again, I I love him like a brother. So he throws me the keys to one of his roadsters with full fenders. And knowing Henry, it's on the bump stops. It oh, looks yeah. like a cartoon car right? Hammer, right and and he's like i'll oh, just drive it around take it easy you know but but if you want to like give a hot lap to you know a potential customer okay have at it so um do you guys know no or Irwin? Irvin, sorry one of randy's customers he has like the brown hot chocolate roadster i pinstriped has blue by you that gto he's a he's a great i don't know him i know great the guy yeah so um he goes i've always wanted to to take a ride in one of henry's roadsters because he's a he's a bigger guy you know he's my size sure. and and henry yes. builds his cars to drive yeah 32 roadster big guy perfect yeah, perfect yeah. car so i was like fuck it no let, let's <laughs> let's go I'll, t I'll take you for a spin well yeah. not really planning that the you know car was sitting on the bump stops on a full fender with big right. giant balloon tires in the back i mean i take columbus fucking hot and i mean we're <laughs> we're just zipping around and uh 
pull back in the, the host hotel and uh, Noel gets out with a big smile on his face and he goes, I don't give a shit what anybody says. I'm, I'm going to have one of these. I was like, fucking A, Noel, you know, good for you, buddy. We high five, knuckle bump, you know, the whole nine. And uh, I think Noel has become Henry's, one of Henry's best customers because of my hot lap Ooh. that I gave him. What's the commission him. structure look like on that? Thank you. I have been up Henry's ass for the past <laughs> three years trying to figure that out because he's had, I think, two trucks and a roadster and he's building like a crazy roadster pickup now. I was like, I did that for you, Henry. Don't forget about it. So, so Henry, if you're so watching you, this, you, you owe me. You, you basically, tanks, made, you basically made it. Minimum. Minimum. put Henry on the map. Yeah. 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 You know what? I'll take that. I'll, yeah. We've, we've yeah. done that for a Lucky now. strike. Jeremy has put. Henry on the fucking map. Yeah. So so back to the the hot lap. So I park it in the parking lot, give uh, the keys back to I think maybe his sister or somebody, and uh, the following morning he he texts me pretty pretty hot, and he goes, dude, what the fuck? You know, like the fucking roadsters fucked. Like this is bullshit. Fucking just reams me out. I'm like, what the fuck's up? He goes, there's burn marks on the back fenders. I'm like, what are you what are you talking about? Whose fault is that? Dude? So the car was brushed you know in typical henry beautiful fashion uh, oh it was bare metal yeah it was bare okay. metal but it, brush it, was, it again dude. it was flat cleared so the tires were just rubbing the fuck out of the very top <laughs> about that much of the fucking top of the rear fenders and just big old brown burn marks all the way down down to the fucking you know the, the brushed metal and i was like henry you told me to take hot laps with customers possibly i said you know i, sh- I sold him a car him. you I'm just serious. drove it you didn't build it that way exactly <laughs> i was like did you put it on the bump stops he's like of course i did i was like well that's your fault you know so <laughs> should have raised I, the bump stops that's that's what i said so and he knows how to sit them though they do look good oh yeah. dude and that car was so cartoony looking yeah. i mean it was just tucked perfectly but you put you know probably a ton of you know dude beef in there and Shit rubs. It's like 600 pounds. Oh, at 600 at pounds of dude. Yeah, yeah, at least. There. So, but, uh, you know, dude good. beef. Yeah. <laughs> dude beef. So, yeah. That, remember that green sedan he did? Yeah. yeah. That that air cool. ride in the back. The thing <clears throat> just sat right on. Everything like, he does is really good. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've known Henry for so fucking long that I, I've pinstriped so much for him and painted so much for him. I mean, shit, I remember whenever his daughter was a baby. And, um, you know, I mean, he's hell of a builder and but he's he's a lot like the 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 normal customer where like i don't want it pinstriped and then you you know kind of keep poking the bear enough and eventually it gets pinstriped you know so but the green sedan is the only one i don't think i've wanted to pinstripe a car so much other than that one but never never let me do it he's got a cool ass shop too yeah yeah so he's actually going to be on my way down back home we're going to stop there and see him so He's building bikes now too, right? Yeah, so uh, I, I did the same thing I did to you, where I was like, Henry, buddy, I'm here. Take my bike for a spin. You'll enjoy it. <laughs> so he uh, gets on my, my road glide, and like, he's gone. Like, don't even hear him in the valley. I'm like, I hope he comes back or he hasn't, you know, bring me the, the gas tank and be like, I don't know what happened. This was loose. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the bike's down over there. And um, so he finally comes back, and he's got a big-ass grin on his face. He's like, dude, this bike is fucking killer. I'm like, yeah, you know, he's been that that shovel head guy. Like, he's had a couple choppers, a couple cholo bikes. Yeah. And um, I was like, dude, you, you need a bagger. Like, we'll go for rides. You know, it's it's one of those bikes that, you know, you want to ride? Let's fucking go. You know, his, he had a pretty badass uh, cholo shovel head at the time. Fucking leaked oil, didn't really start. And um, he came to my house in Pennsylvania once riding it. And, like, Henry's got a big-ass beard, right? So this thing is just, like, blowing in his face. And um, I was like, you, you just need to get a bagger. We'll go on trips, go to Sturgis, do whatever. And uh, all of a sudden, he was like, I bought a bought a bike. And it was in House Harley where I bought my soft tail. And it was about the same time. So we both flew out and uh, rode back. And uh, then all of a sudden, he bought the inverted front end, bought better shocks, bought t-bars like my bike and uh, now he is hardcore performance you know bagger and then he got his sister into it so she also has a performance bagger street glide and i mean shit i think she rides more than he even does and um yeah now he's he's back into building bikes too i think you got me man yeah yeah you've been you've been bit i want to i I like the fact that like you said that's the bike because the bike i want to build is not the bike i hop on to ride the sturgis correct right yeah and like for, bike is. yeah yeah for me my bike i mean it's it's built for a purpose and it's to go fast go hard take turns be fast but also in, still enjoy it you know like manic is is a riot to ride but i would never ride it to sturgis you know it just 
beat the shit out of you and you're going to only get 80 miles to a gallon on 90 because you're doing 100 miles an hour through sunflowers and nothingness. And, um, you know, that my bagger is built for, for a purpose and it does it well. So, but yeah, we've, we've pretty much ruined Henry in the, the performance bagger game. So he's, he's, uh, he's back to it. So, so you're really doing this, dude. Mm-hmm. There's gonna be a lot of panels to paint on that. I know it's going to happen. It's big, but it's also one that you can just go. That's one. I will say, I don't give a fuck. Correct. And I mean, you, you saw dude, my bike outside. I mean, it's, it's Jody stone sitting chips next to you, the dog in between in the center council. The dog, go in the, I got a small dog. It fit in the bag. <laughs> Uh, cut that, a it'll be out. it'll be perched up on the tank. Just cut out. a little hole out in the side bag. Tanks on the hood on those, isn't it? What's that? Huh? What on the slingshots? Isn't the tank oh, up front? Oh yeah! <laughs> Shit, I didn't know where you were going with that one. <laughs> That's not happening. <laughs> not fucking happening. So so here's here's That's, what I think the deal should be. So uh, if, if these two get to pick the cartoon that goes <clears> on your motorcycle, <throat> do you get to pick the cartoon that goes on like Phil's Miata? I think the Miata is the cartoon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should, got a point. dude. We should like lace that. Do like traditional lowrider <laughs> stuff on it. I mean, you stance that thing. Has put there like seventeens. You'd have to do like seventeens would be huge. You'd have to do like tens <laughs> if you were doing spokes. They came with fourteens. Yeah, so you'd have to do like tens. Do they do Dayton's and like? That'd be cool. Think about it. I know they do. I mean, you could do thirteens, but I don't know about ten. With a knockoff. Yeah. Mm. What up? Hydraulics, little three wheel motion on that bitch. Oh fuck yeah! I said put some wag, just put some like wagon wheels on it or, or slotted mags and like do it like old funny car livery. Like you think Dom so? Perdome. Just <laughs> do you remember, do you remember <laughs> John Force's? Uh, what was it? Thunder or something? It had like the night fist holding yes. the lightning bolts. Yes. <laughs> you know, I think that would be a good one. I was thinking days of confu or days of thunder. Doing a little mellow super yellow. flow or mellow yellow. Yeah. Oh yeah, little yeah. cold trickle. Yeah. Yeah. Little yeah. little city Chevrolet or whatever yeah. the hell that was called. Hardy Chevrolet. Yep. And then we get yeah, you like the same three quarter crash helmet with like that weird visor. That'd, yep. That'd you know, toughen it up a little bit, I think. Yeah. yeah. Or street cred. You two could get motorcycles as well. I have a motorcycle. Cool. Dude, I've um, got multiple motorcycles. I drive a whole them, mess I of drive motorcycles. I drive them wherever so. I want. <laughs> See, Whoa. yeah, I, th- I feel like a little hostility from that side of the table with the motorcycle thing. Super. Super humble flex. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, I tried getting Jeremy on the back of mine, so, you know, he, he, he said no. you Get a motorcycle front, that you would want to get on and actually fucking ride. That's what we're talking about, going on trips and stuff like that. Okay. Right. So here, It wasn't here's, trying to be a shot at you about that you didn't have motorcycles. Get bikes that we all can go on and fucking ride together. Let's and, go to Sturgis next year. And see, I, I, I'm sure there's probably a dealership here, like an Easy Rider, or one of those that you can like rent a bike first, just to make sure you're kind of into it, so you don't have to go buy a forty six thousand dollar what the fuck, you know, and then just and then ride fifty grand customizing it afterwards. I mean, sure, give or take, yeah, give or take. You know, it, it, <laughs> see, the, the problem with like performance baggers, and I have this this conversation all the time, is it, it costs a lot to go fast. Costs a lot to look cool too. Oh, and uh, that—that's my next Lucky Strike <laughs> shirt. Is it, it, it's expensive to look this cool, but uh, you know it's like anything else. You know, you you buy a '69 Camaro out of the box. You know, it's not real fast. It's gonna suck. There's a hell. There's a hell Diablo in California right now for sale. A what? For twenty eight. <laughs> it's got a a what? A hell. A hell Diablo. Hell. Yeah, it's a. He knows what I'm talking yeah. about. It's so, an El Diablo with the one thirty one on it. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's basically like a like a elephant. In a Mopar, but a big Got old it. motor in a D, an El Diablo painted special edition Harley. It's twenty eight grand. What? Yeah. Is, is it blown up? Hell no, it's running dry. Uh, yeah. Oh, interesting. I would buy that. Is that that'd a, be a that'd be a ride? Would yeah, it? yeah, yeah. That would be a good time. Is that a trademark infringement on Jesse James? No, Harley's got an El Diablo that's just a special paint job yeah. on the uh, Lowrider ST or whatever. Yeah. But this is the Hell Diablo because it's got the big motor in it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, think of it like how Hennessy does like huh? the, the Velociraptor and a Raptor. Kind okay. of the same idea, but Harley's kind of version. Is it like the like the Mammoth? The Very mammoth. similar. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest motor you could pretty much put in I mean, a I, I think Harley V twin. Listening reliably. Listening to Rogan uh just like basically disintegrate uh what's his name over the mammoth? Oh, how bad of an how bad of a name. Hey, that was. When he just hit him with facts. There's, that's because there's right the there. mammoth, what the mammoth yep, and the raptor, cool. Elio. What the fuck was that? Yeah, I may mean, still have to get painted, but 
All right, so so back to like our down. conversation <laughs> in the parking lot. Imagine that bike still that way, but like with things added to it, like gold leaf, you know, yes. more panels, yes. but still have that that came, same kind of feel to it. Yes. But then you scratch out the whatever bullshit number that is and just put 666 out of one. Yeah. You know, that's like the devil. Exactly. Devil. Yeah. Cause they got limited edition numbers or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my uh, resale value. Oh, <laughs> see, like I'm a big fan of that. Yeah. Like it's, it is number one of my f- most fun things to do. But um, you so, took the reflectors off your bike growing up, right? Yeah, away, right? <laughs> yeah. and I jammed like six baseball cards in the spoke, so I had that that's real all, deep. That's all I'm thinking know. about right there is that right there was some fishing line. That's the first fucking thing yep. to go. <laughs> yep. And like, if, I don't know if you could zoom in, but Harley did this really weird logo on the tank where the H has a horn. Yeah, it's and the, the devil. Yeah, yeah and the there's a tail. It is yeah. the it is whoever cool. designed that. I don't. I don't know. I feel bad for those people. There it is. Yeah, it, it just looks weird. Make it evil. Yeah, like dangerous. So my uh, my local Indian dealer, you know, because Harley and Indian are obviously the you know competitors. I did a uh, religious cool themed again. bike that is for cool. them. Yeah, same bike, just a different color. That one doesn't have the one thirty one on it. So, yeah, that's, that's a, not red. Custom. That's custom you. Color. That is you, dude. I could I could see you riding that. You, can you see that? Yeah. A white bike though? No, no, not the white bike. You you're talking about the other one, right? This one, it's the same bike, right? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah, that bike and some. You, I've never seen Google thing. do this before. What do you do? I, it's an Apple she thing. Clicks like a fucking complete more. You ever watch <laughs> the way he clicks things? I was thinking it was an Apple thing. That's where I was <laughs> ah, going. Shit, dude, just click it. Like a, it's a click. One click. I feel like he's about yeah. to throw this wireless mic across <laughs> the room. Like is is. Yeah, you throw that. We got a fist you know, fight. You know everybody, I mean? they, you throw that mouse. Fucking <laughs> cat Sonata's gonna yeah, come. Right. And that swipe it that mouse comes at me. Uh, yeah, it just either that or or to be a <laughs> just brush it off. <laughs> all right, so yeah. uh, we're we're doing this. Sure, Sturgis next year. I, I think it's all planned. three of you should go. You'll ride with us and my my group of guys. I don't we'll, know what I would ride. We'll go easy. I need like a kid size bike. That's a big. <laughs> you can get on that bike right now. That's a big bike. That bike's not big. Yeah, you, you'd be able to touch on those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just Factory don't do. Just don't lift it. Yeah, yeah. Factory suspension. The the soft tails are are awesome. And this is gonna sound really weird, but like a lot of women have been riding the STs. Okay. Um, because they're not as big as like their husbands' baggers, but they still have bags. They still have a fairing. The you Barbie bike was an on. ST, right? Correct. Yeah. 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 And like you can get a radio on that bike, so I mean it's it's one of those things where like uh, you know shorter stature people and you know a lot of uh, girlfriends and wives. You get like a panini maker or something conversion in those uh, bags, like some. I mean, you could fit like, like three pairs of jeans in them. I mean, you know what else you need? I mean, it's better than that hardtail chopper I painted for for Hoffman. So I mean, I sat on that bike and it instantly hurt my ass. So. It looks comfortable. Yeah, that's, a, that's an OG hardtail, and I'm like, I would not want to ride this out of the fucking parking lot, but damn, does it look good. Yeah, it looks cool. That's break your tailbone the first bump you hit? Oh, for sure. Like, it, it'd probably try to, like, uh, straight up eject you off if you hit something at speed. So, but yeah. I mean, we there's some crazy, crazy things I've had my hands in in this wild career, so. Just seems like motorcycles is the, the latest, so. I think it's awesome. Well, we, now we come to the time we got to ask the standard questions, right? Yeah, standard questions, I suppose. You're enticing, me, or, by, you're enticing me by playing with that. That or we're going to full-blown fight. We're going to save that, dude. You don't just let that out. We've got, it, we've got a ring that announcer right here. Yeah. Just let that out Ladies and free. gentlemen, sitting to my right, we have the great Josh Henning <laughs> using a... He said the gray. <laughs> Josh Henning. It'll come, dude. It'll you got to do the right. knife guy. And wielding a red horse cleaver style carbon fiber knife. I think that's fighting. I think out of the blue corner. <laughs> I think that's pay-per-view. You don't give it away for free, that's for sure. I don't know. I watched that bullshit... Jake Paul fighter. I did too. Or yeah. Not Jake Paul. What's his? Is it Jake Paul? Yeah. Logan's his weird brother. Yeah. Jake Paul and yeah, Nate. Yeah. I, I wanted my money back. Nate got paid. Yeah. Well, shit, dude. I, How'd that I, fight go? Not good. Uh-huh. Went 10 rounds. Decision to Jake Paul. Yeah. Yeah. Don't matter. Nate got paid 10 mil. So. Yeah. Nate's yeah, he's probably right. good then. They're, are they going to meet in. They're going to run it back. MMA? They're going to run it back in the Octagon and PFL. Yeah. 
which will also be a huge payday for both of them. Yeah, It'll probably payday. But also go to decision. For yeah, sure. there's Since no there's way, no dude. In that scenario, Nate's got to whoop his ass. There's no knockout clause. That's why. I f- I, I, What's no knockout? Neither clause? one of them went full fucking bore in the fucking boxing match. Yeah, I, they're so not going to go full bore in the fucking. Yeah, but you could submit them, right? Not unless it, when you sign when you talk about it beforehand and you write the contract up and you say you can't submit me no you don't submit me don't okay. knock me out don't knock me out all right we're getting paid this let's go in there well, then what are you gonna do just roll around and give each other noogies that's like, what they tick- fucking did yeah. in the boxing yeah. match tickle torture <laughs> that's what they did in the boxing <laughs> yeah. match so we, we watched it in, in Sturgis and we're did we're you? all just six of us guys and uh, Nate Diaz had this weird like arms up and he would like bull rush yeah, this like, guy and I was like what the <laughs> fuck is this like I, th- am I boxing. Like, he's never he's, he's never turned his fist stance. over yeah, ever, yeah. but at the same time he's also punched way harder. Yeah, Again, yeah. I'm not saying I, I don't want to fight him. I don't want to fight either one of them, yeah, so I'm not yeah, going to talk too much. Right. Shit. He can also take a fucking punch. Yeah, a shit yeah. ton. Oh, of oh there's there's and forget anything about maybe fake or whatever bullshit. What is real is he's got a fucking gas tank and went all ten rounds and could have gone another ten, and Jake Paul was done. Yeah. He was done at five rounds, but yeah. and in the ninth, I, I saw the one that uh, Nate like had him in a chokehold. I was like about to like yeah reef him over. I would have loved like, just to like by instinct, <laughs> be like, oh shit, I didn't mean to kick the shit out of your face, but it's <laughs> just a, just a habit. Yeah. Just caught a flying so reaction, yeah. dude. Yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. See, that would be my go-to. Like if I was yeah. in the MMA, like as soon as that bell would ring, I would just charge at that motherfucker, just flying knee, just praying for that. That's what Derek Lewis did two weeks ago. Isn't that the the the, the dude that was like my balls is hot? Yeah, he's, oh, like, oh, he's yeah. the yeah. last. Two yeah. weeks two weeks ago, it's the first he comes flying out. First move, flying knee, fucking done. Yeah, that'd be my move. And then if I, if it out. missed, yeah. I wouldn't want to fight anymore. It, well, like, he, he went down and then hammer fisted him, and they stopped it. But you should have seen his inner post fight interview after that one because obviously everybody knew because his balls were hot, right? So instantly he takes his takes his fight shorts off, right? As soon as the fight's over. So Rogan's going crazy. He's laughing. Everybody's going crazy. He gets up. They ask him about the flying knee. Ask him about some other stuff. He's like, sometimes you just got to throw some shit and see if it lands. Then he goes on. Funniest part. He says, I'm going to give it. Before I go, I want to give a shout out to my wife. You know I love you. You better be ready because I'm going to get home and I'm going to bust them guts up. <laughs> <laughs> that's, what he, that's what he says on his phone. Oh, it was geez. fucking awesome. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. So, yeah. uh, your very first car and story about that car. So my very first car was a '93 four door Geo Metro. They made oh. a Geo Metro in four. Oh yeah, they, they did. did. They did hatchback Geo Metro. I yep. mean a four door. Yeah. Wagon. Yeah, it was, it was it was technically a huh. wagon, huh. and um, it was teal, and okay. that fucker saw more airtime than a 747. <laughs> that was a Manuel. Oh, uh, dude, it was a four speed, and you better hold the fuck on because I'm driving it. Oh yeah. <laughs> Like a Muncie four speed. Um, <laughs> I don't think <laughs> <it's> <laughs> Let's put it this way: that gear shift was about yay tall and yeah. had the big, like it, it had, had the rubber diesel. corrugated yeah. thing on the bottom. Yeah, it's it, a, it had the same travel as like a manual '98 Dodge Ram diesel. Okay. You're hitting people in the back seat. Oh, let's gear let's and, talk a little yeah. bit about the uh, the hang time on that because Phil and I we uh, we had a LeBaron '91 LeBaron that saw a tremendous amount of hang time. Yep, a lot of radiators in its, as in its well. time. Yes. Front heavy. I, yep. I feel like picturing. I don't know. I, I don't know that I've ever seen a four door Metro. I'm very familiar with the two door, but I picture it as jumping well. Like so so picture, better than a LeBaron. <laughs> so picture a, a teal egg flying through the air. Okay. Okay. So that that's basically what your you start as, and um, it was very angry when you caught second gear and okay. hit a like I called them a tabletop in Pennsylvania, but it's the railway embankment that like you know, has like a flat spot on yeah, the top and over like the train track kind of tapers down. Well, if you hit that fucker at about 45 and above, yeah, you will be fairly level through the air where like the steering gets real light, but then gravity takes over and yeah. it is just this way. Oh, so it, no, it's, it's no, it's yeah, so. she's going down hard. Okay. So like, I think I've ripped off probably five bumpers to the point. I just drilled holes in the fender and just zip tied them. Yeah. And um, that's kind of how she, she lasted. Um, but you ever what, open the door in the air and like do a can can out the door? Oh, dude, that, back in? that would have been that would have been the move. But uh, sadly, it got totaled and also in an epic air raid fashion. Really? Oh yeah. So um, uh, in my high school playing football, 
we had a huge like uh you know hillside that went up to the high school and the practice field was down low so you had to you know walk a half a mile down this spiraling hill and um but it, during the the snow they would plow all the snow on the top parking snow lot. jump full set fucking snow jump full full snow to jumps? the practice field yeah so so what ended up happening <laughs> is it was an ice wall that Holy had like all the snow shit. blow over Okay. And uh, I hit that with about four buddies wearing our football gear and again, <laughs> um, the safety for conscious. Safety. Yeah. safety conscious. And and this is the one time in my life I wish I had somebody with like the, the phone because my very good friend said that the ground was going down, but you were still going up. <laughs> and I lawn darted that motherfucker into about 17 feet of just blown snow oh. to the point that the whole roof buckled, blew out the windshield, couldn't open the doors. <laughs> and, uh, How did yeah. you get out? Like, uh, out the back? So the, crawl through the hole? Yeah, so we, had, we opened up all the windows and, and kind of like <laughs> dukes a hazard amount. But um, the the plow that they used was a big piece of shit F450. And uh, they actually had to plow a ramp to get to the car because it was just fucking buried. buried. How how was I think that? He wins. Did yeah. you call coach first? Uh, no. So we basically were like, "Fuck," you know, like, "All right, everything works. We're we're right. we're surviving." And then uh, my coach at the time uh, saw us walking up the hill because it was too far to go down and like around. So we just walked up. And the first thing you said was, have you seen my car? We're looking for my car because I think somebody stole my car. <laughs> that would have been the that would have been the better way to, to go about it. But uh, I think my, my coach at the time knew because, like, again, nobody walked up the hill. Right. And he was the first ones that we saw as we, like, crept over the two blatant fucking you know, ramp marks. And uh, he goes, um, so uh, what, what what's going on? I was like, uh, I just wanted to see if I could get the car down there, you know, so we could pile up and load everybody up, you know. And he's and like, "This junk." Yeah, mm-hmm. he goes. So, so the the math was you would just like go over it. I was like, yeah, yeah, there was well, no math. It was it was more this, right? Like there's 800 feet of it. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like there was a small part. And uh, he looked over the end. and He goes, "All right, I guess we'll go have to call maintenance." And got this fucking maintenance guy to bring the plow truck and. Damn. Cut a deal through and towed that fucker out. And, uh, yeah, that was the end of the, the Metro. And then uh, I got a 97 Honda Civic after that, and it went downhill quick from there, too. So Jumping yeah. the hang time on that? Or? No, it didn't have any hang time, but it got a set of Moteggies and had tribal down the side, and that was one mm. of my first overall paint jobs because, you know, movie came out. That was a... I had know, a 97 Civic as well. Fast and Furious, yeah. Mine was an EX with the sunroof. Oh, and, uh, fancy. Yeah. Somebody had some money. Yeah, two-door. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was, it, was a, it was a ride of a little car. Like, it, I just hope I don't ever get to the age where, like, my grandfather was, where it's like, you know what I wish I still had was that 1954 210. I hope I'm not, like, talking oh. to my kids and be like, man, you know what car I wish I had was that red? Civic EX. Yeah, EX yeah. with, like, the five-speed and, like, those V-tech, 17-inch. Son. Yeah. son, you don't know nothing about no v yeah. you, you know ain't about that B16? <laughs> you, know, you ain't no shit. Oh, I had a B18. Yeah? Oh, yeah. See? see if, I had a Type R. There we go. I'll yeah. see you had the money. No, I had a Type R transplant. Oh, but, gotcha, oh. gotcha. So, yeah, my uh, APC and Wings West, I mean, we, oh. we all got to be first-name basis yeah. whenever I was Remember doing modern image import. graphics? Oh, fuck yeah, fuck yeah. I had a big modern image on my hood, yeah. um, you know, because, again, that's what you, you did when you watched what? Fast and Furious. What's, a What's going image? on? Huh? That was a brand back in the day in yeah. the import well, world. What is, they did what is graphics. It? The graphics. Explain. Okay. So, like, all of the, the Fast and Furious cars had, like, the bullshit side graphics. Yeah, like, it would be those. That was like the, the dagger, like the, yeah. There was yeah. there was like a, a sticker company. That was all it was. But yeah. you could buy Got all it. the any color graphics for your cut to fit your car, and they would send them to you, and you could have Are they you still could in put business? them on. I don't think so. No. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't. Didn't work out. Well. Yeah, I think the import business and you know the seventeenth Fast and Furious kind of killed them. The you know, same thing as like look at where big dog choppers is or any of those. I mean, it's the yeah. same, Are any of those guys, same exact formula. Are any of those guys still around? A lot of guys transitioned into other no. shit. No, like a lot of those, those motorcycle companies are out of business. I mean, really, you know, Jesse James is doing the one-off stuff. Like right. they're still, I think Martin brothers are still building a couple bikes every now and again, but you know, like the Peugeot or uh, not Peugeot, uh, Borgette. Borgette. Um, yep. Yeah. The, the iron horse, American horse, you know, redneck Sally, all those bike companies are, are all gone. Some of those were pretty sizable operations, right? Like the big, yeah. big bear was that was a big business, wasn't yeah. it? American yeah. Iron Horse is fucking huge. Yeah, yeah, I had a good friend of mine. They had dealers. This? They had, I mean, they had real estate what all was, over the country. What was yeah. the scale of that? I mean, they're manufacturing and probably 
hundred thousand plus square feet and yeah then just gone yeah so one of my uh, good friends was actually a painter for them and he said that uh, at the highest point they employed almost 16 painters just to do like the custom paint on their you know higher end models that weren't solid one color jobs and um all over yeah yeah they're they're pretty much all gone and nowadays i mean you could buy one of them for like 12 grand and mm-hmm. then, like I'd, I'd buy one right now just to pull the motor and trans out of it so what killed that 2008 I would say 2008 in the, the economy, but I also think that that trend of, you know, the, the bag got to a 360. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, you're, you're just not riding that thing that you spent a hundred grand in, yeah. you know? And, and I think that's where a lot of the, the industry turned <clears throat> into that. The baggers started really gaining popularity where, you know, fuck it. I could load up the wife and, uh, you know, weekends were the shit and, you know, actually go ride this bike instead of, you know, a solid, you know, mounted giant motor that, you know, has a turning radius of a fucking Titanic. It's much what where our that, industry is at. What was the thing that Pete had here? That was Borgay. Borgay. Uh, it's all like, aluminum. It's like a 120 inch wheelbase. Yeah, like yeah. You, you couldn't turn it around in our parking lot. Yeah. Yeah. Some of those bikes got, got so cartoony <clears throat> and wild that like you're, you're never taking it past the bike night. You know, you're not riding it to Sturgis. You're not riding it in Sturgis. You know, you're taking it to Main Street. You're taking it to... Think about some of the show. street rods of the early, mid-2000s. Yeah. Same exact shit. Yeah. You know? Luckily, we, like, people have transitioned, and, I mean... Sure. You, but the customers are demanding stuff that, to be like driven. The chrome brake rotors was for longevity, right? Yeah. That, <laughs> yeah. yeah. There was I heard they stopped things. awesome, I mean, too, yeah. you know? So many... I mean, so many things that have transitioned mm-hmm. in this industry very much like that yeah and I, I think a lot of it too is uh, the the motorcycle and automotive are kind of like brother and sister of the same mom and dad kind of thing um where you know our customers now you know they they want to drive they want to beat their shit out of everything that they own um but you know there's still some shops out there that are still trying to hold on to those like 32 inch big wheel baggers that are on full air and have 80 team feet of stretched bag and you know, like one section thousand speakers. And yeah. And like, I don't, I don't understand the audio bagger scene, nor will I ever. Yeah. But I mean, there's, there's baggers that have more speakers than your car does, you know, and you're not riding it, but they're rolling up to bike night and playing the most gangster ass rap shit. <laughs> but on Sundays, they're the whitest dude in church, you know? <laughs> right. And it's just, it's just a weird kind of situation in I think all of our industries where you know I mean shit I remember the the stereo days and the automotive side you know pu- building a mini truck with a back wall of nothing but you know 10 inch subwoofers trying to you know rip off chicks hair when they sat in them but MTX or Hyphonics or yeah I yeah, remember those the big ass sledgehammers from uh what was it was it MTX so it had those real long fucking subwoofers that so they were like putting in beds so in Vegas. So in Vegas strokers yeah maybe they were like they were square but they were Fucking oh, that was MCX awesome. and the Giant. square ones. Yeah. Solo barracks. Oh, yeah. Solo barracks. Yeah, so <laughs> I want to see one of those in one of your cars. Like, you know, next next one, Rogan builds or Poteet. Like, <laughs> just that, that, the, the caddy. Let's see some, some mm, big old. Just wall yeah. in the back of it. That is, a big old, that is a big old trunk in that thing. Yeah. Yep. He doesn't uh, want any stereo. a single speaker. Ah, stereo. <laughs> let, yeah. alone, let alone enough speakers yes. to necessitate <laughs> a stereo system. <laughs> <laughs> Don't put... A radio in that. So, like, what what did, what is he gonna do? Just here's listen, a little listen here's, to the motor. Yeah. Here's a little known in little inside baseball. So we've built we yes. built a lot of cars for George. Right. Great customer. Great guy. Learned a lot from him. We built a couple of cars. We didn't do radios. We go on a road trip. Angie Johnson and George's sister are driving one of the Mustangs. We're on the road trip. Want a radio? We you guys have got to start putting radios in this thing. Like, well, George says don't put a radio in it and stuff like put a radio in it. We're going to be the ones driving these things. Sometimes we want a radio in it. Just do it. If it gets mad, tell them it's our fault. Yeah. Cause we were driving somewhere. They wanted to listen to the football game. Couldn't listen to it. So listen to their phone. So next car or whatever, we put a radio in it. First thing he says when he gets it, did I pay for that radio? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, say, your sister says you wanted a radio. Well, she didn't pay for the radio. Send her the invoice. I'll pay for the radio. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, oh, shit. Just doesn't listen to it. Doesn't, yeah. Doesn't. I mean, hey, te- teach his own. I mean, I I don't listen to the radio in my bag, so I, I guess I really don't have a leg to stand on. So I have a, a headset in my helmet that those work pretty good. They they work surprisingly well. So um, you know, there's a bunch of different companies out there that you know, like uh, on my helmet, you know, it's just that 
little section on the side. You get Bluetooth everything and phone and, and all that stuff. And, I mean, it's a lot better than listening to what I'm listening to, you know, at a red light because those, those people weird me out, you know. Again, you pull up next to a bike just blaring yeah, some bullshit. You know, Chris Gaines or something like Florida that. Florida Georgia line. Yeah, I mean, it's it's wild. <laughs> So, so nobody gets <laughs> there, to listen to what I'm saying. There we go again. <laughs> it's been a few episodes. <laughs> so. uh, best piece of advice you've ever received? Um, so I was I was thinking about this, and and again, I've I'm very fortunate that I've met some some absolutely killer people in this industry, and um, you you've actually had several of them on this this podcast, and uh, one of them being Dan Webb of all people. Okay, and uh, Dan is good dude. One of my favorite customers I've ever done work for, and um, he is one of those guys that you ask just a general question, and you're going to get a pearl of advice that he's just going to drop on you. And um, I was kind of bitching him one day. I I painted him this big upright bass, and um, you know, I was like, you know, do you do you play like a fucking bass, Dan? Like you don't seem the type that would be, you know, wanting a metal flaked out upright bass with leaf. Like what if, what are you going to do with this? And uh, he goes, to be honest, Jeremy, I'm just going to put it in my, my guest bedroom and it'll be propped up there and he goes, everybody will see it that stays with me. And he goes, um, you know, well, why, why do you care? I, I paid you to paint it. And I said, I'm just always kind of interested. And he goes, you know what, Jeremy, if somebody doesn't like it, fuck them. Fair enough, Dan Webb. <laughs> <Yeah>. Fair enough. <laughs> so, Good advice. Yeah, so Dan Dan has dropped several of those on me in, through through the past several years, and uh, that was that one will always stick with me, that if someone ever questions, you know, why did you do this for this customer, Fuck it's not your bike. Fuck them. Yeah. You know? Dan seems like he's pretty straight and to the point. Oh, yeah. Dan Dan is awesome, and, and I do have to, to give him some shit because on the podcast he made a comment that, you know, I talk shit behind his back. I say everything to that motherfucker's face. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I know whenever this this airs, Dan's gonna call me and be like, "You motherfucker!" <laughs> so, but he is he is the the best uh, one of the best customers I've I've done work for, and he is just a an artist in himself. And I mean, the, the cars he's done and and been a part of, I I still bust his balls to this day that I've never got to gold leaf one or letter one and like how about you, you do one like metal finish it in your dan web fashion but mm. like let's gold leaf yeah. a number on there or Dude, something. how sick would that be on that the sub car yeah just right yeah, in the like, door yeah just that graphic down the side like one side Fuck, maybe see, yeah. see phil you get it yeah. just the whole inside <laughs> yeah. leave the outside oh. but do the whole inside be like those yeah. fancy yeah. shirts you wear to sema yeah, with, with the, the collars. collars <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See, so so when Dan sent me the picture, I think uh, the that rear <laughs> section was just done, and um, it was getting polished. And I told Dan, I said, "Look, like I understand you don't want any paint on this." I said, "But what if I come up and I just mask out the number, and we just engine turn directly to the aluminum, mm -hmm. and then I just like put a black outline around it?" And uh, he's like, "No, nope, th there's too much paint on it." Then at that point, I'm like, "God damn it, Dan! Like, let's." Let's make something Damn fun it, here. Yeah, so so Dan, he's he's an awesome dude. I painted a ton of stuff for him and he's he's a he's a fucking he's a fucking G. Favorite car movie. So um I have You came prepared. You've been listening. I dude, I listen to you guys all the time. So it's you, yeah, it, again you're it's your the, the three of your sultry voices uh, that on a long road trip is just soothing. It's Josh. Might yeah. put you to sleep. Be careful. <laughs> dude, this episode, if it's just all silence and just you, you know, messing with a bottle and the plastic That's sound. What it's gonna be. <laughs> um but uh I think the the movie, and I, again we were talking about this with a uh, with Justin that was here. He's got, and I'm gonna have to use his answer, but then I'll give you my personal one. So he is after me right now to watch a movie called Hustle and Flow. Oh, that's a good fucking movie. Great. I've not great, seen it yet. Great movie. I've not oh. seen it yet, oh, but I guess there's like skinny a skinny man. Yeah. Tell me that don't fell out of your <laughs> fucking man. And, and then and then he started doing this weird thing where it's like get him shouty. And yeah. I mean, I just was like, what are Dude, we doing here? That was um, that Terrence beat Howard. That. Uh, beat whoop that, that trick. No, beat whoop that, that trick. Whoop yeah. that, that trick. trick. Whoop that trick. Is that, that's Terrence um, Howard, right? Is yeah. That, he's a good actor. It's man. a great good fucking actor. movie. So, so it is on my list to, to watch whenever I get home um, because he is a big fan of, the, I think it's, he said it was like an 80s cut list on like 24s. Uh -huh. Yeah. But he's that also... That is the South, basically, by the way. And I was about to say, he's also from North Little Rock, so... Teach his own, yeah. right? You know, I mean, I, I feel like if, huh. if Justin won the Powerball, he would have a box on 26s too. Who wouldn't? See, I'm more of a bubble guy. Like, give me a 98 mm -hmm. Impala on 28s. No, that's just, you know? yeah. And then, and then it would have Hawaiian <laughs> paint. <on Lisa>. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the paint stripper out. Yeah. yeah. And, and see, like, of, of my career, I, I really want to have that 
like one thing is I want to do a Hawaiian punch donk or like an M and M donk. Really? Fuck yeah, why not? Why? I think, Hawaii, I think you, is the better question. It must, again, it'd just be like that that whole just, thing of just like that checking has, it come off. Come down the, to Birmingham and get one. That has, They're <laughs> all down there. Have you not seen them? Oh, I have. Like, I watched the drag racing donks. Oh, have you like, seen the Newport the, donk? I have not. I have it's, a new, it. it's a yeah. Newport box. It's the it's the box. Yeah. And it's it's like the Newport box of cigarettes painted with that the, like fenders. For you. Oh, the, that's fucking awesome. Fenders and quarters of the mint green, and then it's the white. Oh, You're man. telling me that no, the Hawaiian punch livery doesn't exist already? Nobody's done it? I, I don't. The M&M uh, one's d- probably not. I've seen an M&M one, yeah. yeah. Probably but, not to your level. I mean, you it, would. The Shrek one lives. There's a Shrek Dude, one. you would kill it in that. That's a Like, good imagine the whole entire, like, Hawaiian punch part, like, the, the water be, like, engine turn candy leaf. With the the surfer dude on it, you know, it just yeah, yeah. it's you got to be, be down in the back a little bit, just tucking the top of the tires of the twenty sixes. But yeah. you need it's got to have it's got to have fifteen hundred horsepower. You ain't yeah, well, playing a hundred percent. Like it's got to right. have the biggest turbos I can put yep. on. Can I get it's seventeen? Cerakote those thirty inch wheels or whatever. Imagine, what are they a, put lo- on them yeah. imagine a lucky strike and Donk Master collab, dude. It'd break the internet. Oh fuck you yeah, know? it would. So, so I, I want to do put that together. Yeah, I want to do some type of donk. I'll livery. Call my people. You know, like it yeah. could be cocoa puffs, or you know, I don't, I don't give a shit. Just yeah. something fucking crazy. Now the cocoa puffs colors wouldn't pop. I don't. I, the Hawaiian punch stuff. That's a good color palette. Yeah. For yeah. You. you know, Capri Sun. You know, something fucking crazy. Yeah. I mean, the Capri Sun you could do. I don't know how you accomplish these chrome yeah, kind you know, of tricks. Finishes. Yeah. Serial tricks. That'd be a good. But one. dude, you you do like. The whole thing in that kind of chrome, like the Capri Sun, whatever you call that pouch. Yep. With that livery on it. Sunset down the hood. Fuck yeah. I the next be level. Awesome. So, but yeah, so so we were talking about donks and boxes and bubbles and all that stuff while we were talking about car movies. But uh, I think personally, mine is Grease. Okay. Like my mom was a huge Travolta fan. That so was my wife and daughter. And, and, and I think... The the end of Greece with that 46, 48 big fendered car with a oh, clear hood. Bolts. With the spikes on the yep. damn uh, yep. center caps or whatever. Yep, and it was all metal flake, like pink with like the, the crazy lightning bolt down the side. But I also want a convertible Merc with flames on it. So hmm. How about the Merc from da, 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 uh, Cobra? Da, 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 da. <laughs> the Merc from Cobra is, is good. But again, there's just something about having angry spikes sticking out of the hubcaps, yeah. you know? So. You can jump the Merc from Cobra. This is true. This is true. So. You can jump a Geo Metro. Too. I, that's where I'm going. Yeah. I, think it, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you could jump anything if you try hard enough. Yeah. It's, you know? Also true. But see, I think I, like my generation had the best car movies because we caught like the tail end of Knight Rider. Yeah. Had Fast and Furious and all of that shit. And then. Right, right. What year were you born? I was born in 87. Oh, all shit. Right. Yeah, I'm 83. Josh is like. 60, what are you? 18. Off. I mean, he doesn't look a day above like 72. I was yeah. born 78. Uh, shit, so I was going to go with TV shows. So if you don't know any of the references, then what were you watching when you got home from school? Uh, I was watching a lot of Street Sharks. Street, street sharks. sharks. Yeah, have you ever seen that cartoon? No. no. Oh, fuck. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> again, back to my wish list of things to do. I want to okay. do a street sharks helmet. So street sharks. Yeah. I so what it was that. was it was a I think sharks it, from the streets. It was. <laughs> so it was four guys that fought crime, but they got like, and I forget the the minutia. So hopefully nobody on the internet you know fights me over this, but they somehow got intermixed with shark DNA. And like one was like a great white, one was a Mako, one was a hammerhead shark, whatever. This is like shark. They wore suits and stuff. Dude, uh, cowboy like- jeans, like <laughs> cowboy boots and jeans. And I think if you go on my Instagram, I, I put a post on there that said I want to do one of them, uh, one of the helmets. Uh, but there's, <laughs> there's like there's like four of them. Local to Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh area only. No, or? it was it was it was everywhere. I, I thought I, I posted one of those. But uh, I'll, so I'll, I'll have to send you guys one because it's it's the most hilarious thing. But they fought crime, and then whenever they would like fight somebody, they would turn into these like sharks. Okay. Right. So they were top half sharks, bottom half Man. legs. Yeah. So they could also walk. Correct. Like a, like a manatee. <laughs> Correct. Like a shark upper torso. And and they rode Harleys, and again they fought crime. So wow. so maybe maybe I did. They rode Harleys. So short of fight, yeah. short of fighting, short of fighting crime, it sounds like this is what you've modeled your life after. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, <laughs> you were so, an, an impressionably young Jeremy is yeah. coming home from school. Yeah, yeah. So, man, I thought I posted a picture of it because I've I've wanted to do a, a street sharks helmet, but maybe not. 
Street huh. Sharks. Yeah, so Street Sharks. And, um, you know, like a lot of Pokemon bullshit. I mean, I was big and whenever I was young and, uh, you know, all the, the OG cartoons. I mean, me and Tom and Jerry. I mean, I think I drew those guys, in, you know, all the time and Rat Finks and all that crap. So We were right in that area or era where it was just like Dukes of Hazard reruns. Like there was an, a, a sick day at home, Dukes of Hazard. Dukes of Hazard and like Cheers. Yeah. Yeah. No, 18? Oh, yeah, 18. he gets an 18. Yeah. yeah. See, I caught like a little bit of that. Like, again, they were all reruns at that point. Like, the 18 the van, like, I had a fucking big old action figure set with all those guys. And, oh, man, I love You know, Miss, Mr. T, I mean, fucking, I did a uh, brown, excuse me, a brown bike that uh, was called Mr. T. And on the back, it had Pity to Fool with Mr. Mr. Mm-hmm. T's cartoon on it. Yeah, I remember uh, different strokes. Yeah. Yeah, see, we had Step by Step and uh, Family Matters. Oh, I remember Family Matters. Yeah, yeah. My my mom, like, uh, what was it, TGIF. It was oh, like yeah. a whole section of, like, Boy Meets World yeah. and, you know, all that stuff. So, you know, we, we watched that. But That um, was that curly-headed dude, right? Yeah, uh, and fucking, Topanga. Uh, Topanga, oh. yeah. yeah, yeah Topanga, Topanga had it going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, had, we had a long Corey conversation Matt, over Corey that. Corey Matthews, it was a.k.a. Two Corys, Josh right? Baker. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we had a long conversation about Topanga out of the blue and, and Sturgis of, like, you know, what year was she, like, the best because yeah. by the end of Boy Meets World, she was like pretty. She put on some weight. Yeah, yeah. she she She's, she went she, off the reservation a little bit. Yeah. But yeah. Like second probably, season in Topanga, like I'm down. She can still Topanga pants off. I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> <laughs> probably about the time that like gushers and fruit roll ups were getting popular. Yeah. She was getting after. Yep. Yeah. Fruit by the foot. You <laughs> yeah. remember fruit yeah. by the foot and all that shit? Oh, yeah. God damn. Like all the chemical fucking gooey things, you know? But, time for a pocket dump. I mean, since I'm on the bike, I really don't have much. I figure on a bike you must have some sort of like defense weapon or like a fucking billy padlock and a my, my stabby knife from Arcane. Mm. Ooh, so. look at that! That does look quite stabby. That looks yeah. sharp. And then I also got a uh, military issue Hogue knife uh, that is like a typical slider style. That's basically like a full blown exacto. Yeah. So um, one of my very very good customers, in fact, uh, Jamie Ritchie, who that. Roadrunner helmet right there that I painted. Uh, he's a super big knife collector, Shit. and um, he uh, after I painted that and a couple other things, he was like, "I'm a I'm gonna get you a good knife." And um, as you can see, it's been used to cut boxes and everything. Got the tape, tape thing. residue on it. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, that's from uh, Arcane Designs. And, that's uh, a cool knife. Yeah, dude, billet machines everything, and I mean, it's been sharpened a couple times, and I mean, yeah. it's it's awesome. So, now, like I said, I got a Hogue uh, military issue. Uh, spring style slider that I'll I'll keep in my pocket, but in the bike I have every other fucking katana tool. samurai sword. <laughs> yeah, yeah, AR fifteen. You know, got a couple pistols, but uh, are you, you know. carrying when you're riding cross country? Uh, typically not, just because uh, states get kind of weird on that. Um, I like, like a coach gun. So we um, again we had this like, conversation of like how cool would it be to have like a dual barrel like super skinny blunderbuss style just shooting nails at people you know that cut you <laughs> off or something um chuck and change yeah yeah, yeah. Like, so so now it's like uh the, the biggest defense on is uh crushed porcelain so maybe maybe this is the, yeah that's does wonders for the glass it, it does so uh yeah. my my grandfather in his <laughs> chopper days would would break busted uh spark, spark plugs, plugs you know yeah, you keep about a pocket this. of them and when you're doing 80 miles an hour in front of that person you just kind of like and just keep on going, and all of a sudden, there's not a car behind you. So it's a, uh, it, it's it gets wild on the road on these long trips. And like I said, sometimes you're just easier to go faster than the person behind you that tries to run you off the road. So, but states get angry. Hmm. I thought that was an urban legend. Porcelain, it's not. It is not, sir. Okay. Now, ball bearings is also another one. So, like uh, PSA for everybody out there listening: don't tailgate bikers or you know, cut us off as you try to, you know, get out of traffic. They probably got some shit. They probably got some shit. And, you know, a <laughs> lot of times it's, uh, again, you won't be able to catch me whenever I stick my bike between two cars at 100 miles an hour when I blast your window out. <laughs> so, but I've, I've had a lot of times where I've dented cars and kicked mirrors off. And, um, you know, coming out of uh, Dallas uh, this trip, one of my good friends almost got taken out by a box truck. And I thought he was going to just rip that dude's mirror off his truck. So it's mirrors like, off of like modern cars come off 
way easier than you'd think. It, it is surprising. So <laughs> it's like they're not even attached. <laughs> yeah, it, it depends on like the scale of the anger. You know, like I think yeah, if you but you can you can hammer fist one like splitting lanes coming through from the guy that thing will just disintegrate it's like it was taped on. Yeah. So <laughs> so our our move uh, typically since our bikes are lifted is I'll pretty much get up next to you and just stick my foot out and just in a swift kicking motion that thing will just be. Oh, right on, just yep, like a joust. Pretty much, pretty joust much. Off. Yep. In Mexico, if you were to have to do it at some point, right. possibly. Yeah, yeah, it gets it gets crazy, and I mean, every every single road trip, it seems like there's some new and exciting adventure that happens. And uh, this trip, I mean, it's it's been everything from crazy traffic and people cutting us off because you know we're on an air cooled bike in Texas. It's 150 degrees on the asphalt. And we're, you know, blasting down the the berm at, you know, 30 miles an hour. And, you know, people just say, fuck you. And all of a sudden they're 90 degrees to traffic. And, uh, yeah, sometimes you just kick a fender or light in and all of a sudden they go right back into traffic. So helping them along. Exactly. I was, I was like more, bumper bowling kind of. Yeah, I was, I was pointing you in the better yeah. direction. You yeah, know, yeah, so. cattle herding. Yeah, yeah exactly. we're all going this direction. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so but uh, yeah, I mean, it's. It's just wild. I mean, last year Sturgis trip, we had uh, a Yeti cooler come out of a pickup truck at about a hundred miles an hour. And, Ooh, uh, that's hairy. Yeah, that that's that was a pretty gnarly evasive maneuver. But um, did you grab any beer or anything on the way, dude? Uh, so seeing a Yeti cooler that's white just coming flying at you Ooh. at that point, I'm like, I hope this doesn't take my head off. You know, there is no reaction time, and you're just ducking Shit. and praying for the best. And um, you know, it's wild. And you know, I got to make fun of Josh here. Alabama's the worst. Like they put all kinds of shit in the bed. Got to haul it somewhere with no with tailgate some... though. <laughs> no, you know it's like oh, there's a pitchfork. You know it's in the bed. Then yeah, it'll be fine. Yeah, that it'll yeah. mock you seven. That's not making fun because you are a hundred percent right. Because I have seen <laughs> the shit. Yeah. So this is a little off topic, but in Alabama, headed to work somewhere, whatever it is, driving, minding my own business, in the fast lane, riding coming up on a vehicle and I can tell it's a pickup truck pickup truck is hauling some stuff in the back right so they've got like bed and bed frame and stuff like that on the very top above the bedside rails is a mattress large mattress mm. to keep it down they put their young boy oh my god 13 14 year old boy that's did he fly on, the, on the back of to hold it down yeah well Wind got a hold of that mattress, and he went for a magic carpet ride. Holy <laughs> shit! And we're going. This is we're going 60, 70, 80 miles race. an hour. Yeah, and it was boom. I mean, up with in the, the air kid, with the kid on it. On the kid on it, and I'm behind. So it's Holy well, it's shit. going up. I'm like, oh, 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 oh. So I'm like, like, like cutting kite, across. Like a I kite? get on the brat. So he comes down, and it's basically he's coming down on the mattress but it's like comes this way at the same time so he comes down and he basically on his back and head thing so slam on the brakes get that uh, they stop or, you know Holy got everybody shit. taken care of and then the you know cops and stuff are coming in Holy but shit. like on the way back so all that time like then i had time to process it i'm like that kid went for a fucking ride yeah and who says hey hold it down make sure make sure it doesn't go anywhere Make sure that mattress don't go nowhere. So Do you after think the cops roll were tied was thrown in there anywhere? <laughs> no. Yeah, I bet it was. Yeah. Hold it down. Roll, roll tide. tide. Yeah. Yeah. I, did, I beg to differ, but I feel like they put <laughs> the mattress back on and the kid just got back on. Yeah. Yeah. Really. How was the kid? Like any serious injuries or they quite possibly could have just kept on going and left the kid, judging by everything else that they had going on. Got it. Yeah. And see, like have uh, does Illinois allow the dual trailer action? I don't Bob. know. Yeah, as far as like, or? that's when you see like a art, like a somebody's pulling like a camper trailer with a boat. Correct. You're talking. I don't know. Yeah. So, so we were in New Mexico and they allow that, and it was a piece of shit like F two fifty hauling a giant goddamn three axle camper mm-hmm. with a dual axle trailer with two golf carts on it. Wow. So this thing is and seventy, just, yeah, seventy yeah. feet long, and he is flying. 
with this goddamn monstrosity on the back. So go fast enough, it stays straight. <laughs> it'll, it'll, pull <laughs> it. it'll pull that's through it. Pull through it. That's what they say, right? Yeah, I, I've seen that like thing where you you change the weight and it all of a sudden yeah. does one of those. But so this guy comes past us as we're like getting off to to get gas, and uh, I, it made me wonder how many times do you think families are doing that and they get to whatever pilot and they walk back and they go. Didn't Where we the have fuck's the boat? Did you or like? Where's the jeep? Did you hook the jeep up? Yeah, I swear I hooked I'll the jeep it, up. Yeah, it happens pretty often. Because that's what I always worry about. Like the most is like you know one of my my mom's things is like well you know I worry about you all the time. I'm like don't worry about me. Worry about the fucking other assholes that are yeah. out there. And um, I always wonder like what would happen if one of those came off at 80 miles an hour? Because again, you know, those tires are recommended for 80 miles an hour across New Mexico desert. Yeah. Imagine how to, <laughs> how to trying to judge a trailer coming off the ball. Yeah. What direction that's going from behind. Yeah. Like you're, you're just, uh. that thing could go anywhere. Yeah. And, and then like in, in New Mexico, those roads are so fucking awesome that I'm sure that tongue would hit one of those center divider parts. Oh, just like, you know, just <laughs> eject cool. into into the atmosphere. It'd, it'd, it'd be cool. Did so. you see that car that hit the back of that ramp back uh, tow truck yes. a couple weeks ago yeah. on the interstate? I've always thought about that. Yeah, yeah. I, I have too. Now you know what it looks like. It it looks bad. Yeah. Well, did you it see the, the awesome Tesla that went into the gym? Yeah, I yeah. saw that one. And too. Did you see the video of like it actually hitting that like Dude, that, roundabout? So that's how I pictured your metro jumping because I knew <laughs> the LeBaron nose dives right, yeah. but that thing, that Tesla, you did. That thing was it it's pretty, sent it. The battery dude. is pretty, you know, nice and level. Yeah. Elon yeah. knows what's up, dude. I yeah. mean, that, the thing is, <laughs> that thing is balanced. Yeah. You think he planned that? Yeah, yeah you probably. Put, you put that plaid in D and just let her eat. She'll yeah. fucking go through whatever. Yeah, I mean, that, so. it was twenty feet up into the side of that gym. That was a there was some. He was famous, something famous ball player. I don't know, maybe it was something. See, and that's my that's my problem. Is like, I've painted a bunch of stuff for ball players and famous people, and they just don't give a shit about what they drive. You know, right. it doesn't matter if it's expensive or not. They just beat the dog piss out of it. And, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll just go buy a new Tesla tomorrow because I folks, ramped it into the gym. That's what folks can be saying about you and your M&M's box I mean, bo- or bubble. <laughs> Dude, Look at I, this guy. If he's I win, if I win the lottery, <laughs> there will be signs. He's beating. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going to come to the roaster shop and drop my donk off and be like, all right, look, I need a full chassis, and I want it to tuck 26s with one of those twin turbo thingies in there. Well, we do it. Dude. Yeah. We Dude, did. is that a mini giraffe in the back of the truck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll grow yeah. into a full size giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's baby. Yeah. Has Avant Garde ever done an ostrich blue yeah. and white interior? Probably <laughs> because we've yeah. done donk chassis for them. So Yeah, I'd be all for it. It'd be it'd be a wild situation. So like it's like I got all my heart set on like a true traditional low rider. Yeah. Um, you know, I I got to to ride in a, a 60s. I think it Danny D's was a 66 Impala and uh that thing was just pink on pink on pink on pink and just was awesome. And I was the whitest dude ever getting out of that fucking car in you know, the middle of LA. And, uh, after that, and he parked it on three wheels. And of course I was riding passenger and I'm like, how the fuck am I supposed to get out of this? Danny <laughs> dive roll off. The yeah. And he just side. slams the door and goes, mm. I was like, God damn it. Guess yeah. I need one of these now. Dude, eventually I'll have a 79 Monte Carlo that will be coming your way. Fuck. Yeah. That will be low rider out. Yeah. I'm all for it. All for you it. You got to think about what that looks like. All the metal flake. See, that's the one that, that you bring Wyatt, and yeah. I, I'll teach him how to do metal flake and hey, paint and all that shit. Let's do it. So let's do it. It's, I think it be you've sweet. said it on air, so now you are committed. I'm, I'm completely <laughs> down. Because Wyatt's what? 10? 12. 12? Yeah, 12. So by the time you get the car, he'll probably be 16, right? You know? So. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah, right. we'll, we'll just teach him how to we do get everything. A chassis Ready to done. Go. Right. Yep. Yeah. I think it'd be sweet as hell. It would be awesome. I mean, it's been awesome. It wouldn't yeah. be the best influence on him. Yeah. And wait, who? On him. Yeah, probably. To to work with Wyatt? Yeah. He's... Yeah, he'd probably teach you a thing or two. Oh, yeah? <laughs> he probably shouldn't learn at your age. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. See, I'd teach him how to do, like, uh, you know, tagging and stuff. and be like, take the nozzle off and get these ones, and then you can get, like, a pencil point, and then you can get real creative with some shit. He's, he's at the... Well... I think he just got out. Is it the ear doctor today from a firework incident? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah. What? Yeah. Indoors? No, not indoors. <laughs> <laughs> He's all right. But just holding it too close. Trying to light the bottle rocket and shoot it out. No, dude. Have you? Seen, you know the snap pops? Yeah. 
fucking go to a fireworks store now and see what the new snap pops are like? They're like little M80s. They're these little tubes. So we buy them because we go get fireworks, you know, at, for the 4th of July, and we get these little packs. He's like, can I get snap pops? Sure, dude, you can get fucking snap pops, right? Yeah, could knock yourself out. Yeah, so we get these things, and they're like, you know, they look like little, uh, like you ripped a fire cracker off, you know, like okay. that, the little tubular thing. So we're sitting there, and I'm like, oh, yeah, these are cool. They're a little different than the other ones, and you throw this thing down on the ground. It sounds like an M80. Jesus. Yeah. And you get these in Illinois? Well, just over the border. Oh, okay. Wisconsin, I was about to say, but, like, <laughs> Illinois hates fun. But I'm surprised dude, they I mean, those. it is, they're way too loud, honestly, like for children, way too loud. So what did he do with them? Well, he didn't do anything. He was messing around with his friends. Somebody threw on a little too close, but snap pop, right? Now we and just, do you believe that story? Yeah, it's like yeah. the stories we told Bomb. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, yeah, mom, I don't know what happened. I did it's, not shoot uh, Jeremy with a Roman candle. Right? I don't know how no. it caught on fire. It was it wasn't, just a little black hat. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, it was Phil that caught on fire yeah. with a Roman candle and, <laughs> and a so, spud gun. So right. in, in New Mexico, we stopped at this gas station where I almost bought you the bison, and uh, they sell fireworks there. They had Roman candles in packs of, like, 15. So they're this big. I was like, wonder what I could do if I just lit them while riding and turned behind me and just shot all five of my friends. Yeah, I've done that you before. Know? Yeah, we used to it's, do it on mini bikes. They like, come yeah. at you because it, it, like, you know, you multiply it, right? Yeah. It's plus 60 miles an hour. <laughs> so <laughs> as fast as that thing goes, you know, add another 60 miles an hour. And it, they're moving pretty quick. When, yeah. you're, when you're behind it, it's... It's interesting looking. That's fantastic. Those fuckers That's are fantastic. flying it. Because <laughs> uh, have you seen the, the latest firework craze with the fucking bundle of uh, the like sparklers? Like yeah. You bomb? get like a yeah, yeah it's, like a big old fucking thing, and they somehow magically explode. Yeah, you gotta have a lot of time on your hands to do. We yeah, but it's did the, it once years ago. It's yeah. the greatest yeah. thing ever. It makes a big boom, but it's so much work. It's a lot of work, yeah. but a lot of. You just set up a triple flex in here. Yeah, the triple flex dwarfs it. Dwarfs it. <laughs> I disagree. I promise uh, you because I've done them both. The triple flex brings out the SWAT team. <laughs> Wait, what is a triple flex firework here? So a triple flex is... Uh, Not only am I learning about here, delicious this, bourbon, this, I'm learning about This you absolutely cannot. Now? It's past no. the statute of limitations. But you can't... This is this is like the anarchist cookbook. You can't just tell the world how to build it. It's past the statute of limitations, and you can because you can't. You probably can't get your hands on this kind of okay. artillery. No problem. Go, artillery. Get after it. Yeah, a triple flex is. <laughs> <laughs> you take. So is this going to be one of those moments where it just like? Beep? It might be. All right, now it chance. might be. So a uh, six-inch mortar. Okay, so it's like a cannonball. Sm- yeah. It's a bowling ball basically when you hold it it's substantial right so they make sounds they call them a six inch mortar sound for a professional fire display that's like something you would go to like the city of chicago and they would have it's just the one that goes up and goes boom gotcha well it has a lift agent in it at the bottom of it and you cut that out and you get rid of that and then triple that's one times you know three you take three of them and then you duct tape the shit out of them (laughs) together Right. Okay. One roll of duct tape, two rolls, multiple rolls of duct tape. A little compression. Yeah. Gotcha. And gotcha. then you got to be careful because the wicks on those, that's an electronic wick, which I can tell you, like I've learned the hard way, those are not regular wicks. They happen, they go off like that, right? So you put a conventional wick onto the electronic wick. You find a large mature tree. You know, I'm talking like a 12 inch plus trunk yeah. on a tree, and you another roll of tape around that when that is lit said 12 inch tree is halved right oh my God. yeah and the SWAT team <laughs> wow i, I, have, I yeah. have a couple questions go ahead one how did you figure this out trial uh, and error <laughs> yeah trial and error but you, you yeah, you work up to it. Gotcha. Yeah, work up there to was it. a single flex. Yeah. Yeah, there was a then single flex. Like, yeah, cool. <laughs> Honestly, Mikulich kind of started it with, uh, you take like a, you know, just a regular, like a three inch mortar and you. Brian? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that, that, okay, now it's yeah. starting to, to come around. Right. And you throw that and it's like, oh, that's pretty cool. Or one's cool. 
And you put one of those in a barbecue grill. Yeah, you do too. Yeah, you put it in the barbecue, and then it just snowballs. And, and then it snowballs on the back. Fills and then it's, <laughs> right, and then it scales. <laughs> right. uh, wow, I think I need to come yeah. here for like July 4th and see how you guys really party. Yeah, yeah the back of the Audi thing, that one is... The, that one is as shocking to me as it is to you. <laughs> you think? Yeah. I doubt it. So wait a minute. What? They, what is this? Is this put a story in, time? They put it in like a cast yeah. iron, like old school barbecue grill. And it, was a conven- it was like a normal barbecue grill. You don't realize how brittle a cast a cast grill is. So and they got it on GoPro camera, Fantastic. which surprisingly had a wide enough angle to catch your, to capture everything. Lit this three-inch mortar, closed the lid, ran, hear a bunch of giggling, kaboom! And the top just goes, like, into outer space. Well, into pieces. Yeah. yeah. And then a big chunk of it comes down 80, 90 yards away onto the back of my car. There's a bunch of chunks <laughs> in it. <laughs> <Shit. laughs> just leaves a crater right in the deck lid. That's fantastic. I That's think fantastic. it caught the sail panel, too. Yeah. <laughs> <It was, laughs> Uh, I'd have never, I'd have never in a million years thought that would get that, yeah. have that kind of range. <laughs> That's one of those like Tannerite situations where yeah. everybody's on yeah. the like it Tannerite is. in the right. wardrobe or the. Who would have thought? Yeah. Like I'm, I'm far enough away, and then it just projects right yeah. back. Yeah. The refrigerator door comes <laughs> yeah. right past you. Yeah, yeah. Mine was a, an old wooden like, uh, like one of those big tall dresser drawers. And we just were all shooting. I think, like, one of our buddies just threw it in, like, a random drawer. So we were just peppering this thing, and all of a sudden, like, the brass, like, little handles that were in the drawers oh, came like a bullet? flying. Oh, it was wild. Like, just duck and cover, full-blown, like, oh. I saw this in a movie once. I think you put your hands over your head kind of situation. <laughs> duck and cover. They taught yeah. us that in, like, uh, elementary school. Yeah. yeah. To, no matter, like, the severity, what the severity of the... You know, disaster is you just duck and cover. Yeah, get under your desk; it'll be safe. So, yeah, this has been awesome. It has, but I, I do have a present for you guys. Oh, what do you got? Well, this is a day of presents. So, we so have so many cool things. Since I am an artist and I do draw all the time, I drew a logo that Jeremy has seen, but I don't think any. Did you show these two? I did not. No, because no. I, I brought it just did for this, this occasion. <laughs> awesome. So I'm going to tear this out in a hopefully nice fashion, and I hope this gets framed on the wall. But you, do you want to put to? I'm going to put it next to this really nice. Here, knife. let's move this out of the way here, so we can get a. And also, this this okay. this pencil usually isn't also in my pocket um, because I've almost had to throw it away at TSA a couple times. So this is the official. Oil and whiskey caricatures, and it needs to be framed forever. So it will be framed. <laughs> I'm a bit scared. Ah, all right. Nice. Nice. See, look, it's an oil and whiskey guy <laughs> touching fingertips and tips. That, look, at that's that. awesome. I'm a buffalo. <laughs> it's buffalo, <laughs> buffalo train. <Yeah. laughs> so. That's really good. So I thought it, w- it would be a fun, fun thing for oil and whiskey. I that's didn't know, yeah, perfect. That's I didn't know how to incorporate the two. I'll get a, I'll get a frame. Yeah, that's getting framed. this week. Yeah. Nice. So yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, touching tips and then says, uh, you know, <laughs> I'm a buffalo. <laughs> I'm a buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> ah. That make for a good t-shirt. Yeah, since oh, I couldn't get the awesome. uh, the gold plated AK forty seven hookah on my bike either to to bring you from Truck Stop Treasures, I. Man, that's, that's even better. That's yeah, got a personal yeah. touch. Dude. Yes, indeed. We yes, appreciate indeed. it. You got You didn't sign it. I didn't. No. Oh, I, I'll sign it then. Yeah, you got to sign it. Uh, it's been awesome. It has. I appreciate you guys uh, taking yeah, the we, time. We appreciate yep. you coming out and hanging out, man. Well, it's yesterday great, you great guys were you. were fantastic to uh, give me and my my asshole buddies a a tour of the it, place. It's and, our pleasure, dude. You know, you guys are always my favorites to come see and talk to and visit, and you know, you guys are are my heroes so check out lucky strike underscore designs on instagram where are you going to be at next where they can all the fans come beat you up about (sighs) paint job um we're talking about going to texas for uh born free texas um Mm -hmm. hopefully manic will be there um i don't know if i'm gonna ride or trailer yet um but uh pretty much just kind of trying to get back into the shop now after being gone for a week and a half and um, you know, Instagram's usually the best place for me. And uh, you know, probably going to do a couple shows here for the rest of the year. But uh, after Sturgis, it kind of winds down, and we're uh, going to be starting to deal with Daytona crunches and builds and all that stuff here in the next probably two months. So um, you know, Daytona, we usually have a you know set up in a bitty 
pretty big presence. So um, yeah, we'll be we'll be there. Awesome, right on, man. Well, coming out to SEMA. Ooh, that's a good question. So um, I haven't been to SEMA since COVID shut the first one down. So that's what, 2019 and uh, plus PPG doesn't really do shit. So uh, right now I'd like to try to make SEMA just because I haven't been there for, for a couple of years and hang out with everybody. But I'm also trying to see if I could possibly get like Manic into, uh, you know, a booth or something. Um, so we're, if we can, we'll, we'll be there. But if not, um, I don't know yet. It's a good question. So are you guys doing a party? Do you guys still do that? This year might be, it may very well be the year for the wow, return. That's so Josh noncommittal. Just, <laughs> <laughs> it Josh could be, the meanest it look. could quite possibly maybe be the year that we bring it back. So possibly. I remember, and, and again, well, <laughs> since you also had this guest on, I could talk about it. So me and Justin Olson from Dakota Digital yeah. went to the party that I believe you guys had at the SLS. Mm-hmm. Okay. And it had that like back pool area like where the mm-hmm. the, the bar this is and the, the first stage year. Was. oh that was yeah. year yeah that was yeah, i think it was year one inception and um they had those like clear walkways that went through the pool somebody fell in the pool me and justin walk. watched that lady eat shit and fall in the pool <laughs> dude does anybody know who it was I, tell me i tell don't me think she was that. a part of it like well, the deal was that like head on or was that a step back i i, I think it a was more stagger. yeah it was like just because it was a clear walkway over yeah, a pool it. Yeah, I and it was that. like one of those you know situations yeah. but like definitely caught the i remember the it in the moment there was like a security and it was somebody came up and told me like hey we got to make sure we close this somebody just fell in the pool and it was like oh fuck so who it was, was it? It? <laughs> and i was like no tell me who it was it was like it was some lady all right, like, was it part of this group? I don't think it was part of, oh, I don't give a fuck then. That's fine. Shut yeah. the thing down. Cause, cause, I just wanted to make fun of somebody if somebody fell in the pool. Yeah, because me and Justin were, like, standing there having our, our kind of booze and partying, and um, they had, like, the little two-person tables, like, right at the doorway. And, again, we kind of just turned at the right moment and watched her just eat <laughs> shit into the pool, and we're like, <gasps> oh. No, she's fine. She's getting up, you know, because, of course, like, that yeah. water's only, you know, Belly yeah. button high, so but yeah, it was it was a wild situation. That seems like forever ago, right? That one does. I mean, that would have been twenty nineteen. Yep. Yeah. So, and if you guys need some fun trophies, let me know. I'll paint some some cool shit or maybe right. one for like the best. Let's get sales or you it's know. it's getting started now, dude. Yeah, we've got we've got our it's first sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Lucky Strike will do like first sponsor. The, w- w- let's do one nice trophy that I'll paint. Okay. Uh, what do you think? What do you think it is? Because last time we did skateboards, we printed them. They were cool. They were, but they and weren't we did lucky the strike cool. Right. No, they yeah, weren't. No, so, I mean, right. Got to gotta step up some one of the trophies. Like, you could print, like, you know, whatever. Second place gets a yeah, printed yeah, trophy. Yeah, second place gets a printed one. Okay. So, so lucky strike will right, com- commit he, he's to, committed a, here. to a badass trophy for something. Something. They best decide on. Most chassis sold. Would that go to Boris? It may very well. You know, Boris I mean, has been fucking killing it. Like what? What would be the the number one trophy? Man, I mean, we've done the the the, the idea. I mean, it, previously it was best on RS. You know, I mean, that's yeah. the kind of the whole motto yeah. behind it is the number one car built on an RS chassis. Is that still the direction that we're going? Yeah, I, mean, I think I think probably I think so. Because then who who got, judges that part? I mean, it's a panel of esteemed. Individual industry <laughs> select industry personnel. Yeah. We yeah. judge Us. it. We judge it. <laughs> yeah. It was judged the exact way it should be judged. You know that, that all these other things should strictly on. Holy shit, that's fucking bad. Strictly badass. on cool yeah. factor. Fuck yeah. The one that everybody knows is the bad bitch of the group. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'll, I'll commit to that. Best on RS. Okay. Trophy will be painted and sponsored by Lucky Strike. You're not getting any money. Because I'm broke. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, this is priceless, dude. Yeah, yeah. It is a priceless one of a no, kind it really is. trophy. So, you know, we can figure out what you guys are thinking or want. If you guys want to machine stuff, or I could blackmail Justin in a machine and some cool shit. Or Let's do that. Let's start. Yeah. What if it's a helmet? The problem with helmets is like it's sizing. Nice you know, well, it, just if it goes, we like give up there. we give a wrestling belt too, though. I mean, a helmets are kind of. <laughs> Do you not wear a wrestling belt? I think when you, you go. One? I think you go with l- like just a large. Anybody that's has a larger than a large, you, you got a big fucking dome. And I mean, you're kind so of an exception. The right? other thing we can do is I have a bunch of uh, just cheap helmets that I use for like uh, you know paint displays. Yeah, I can cut one in half and like mount it on something, so it's like almost like a three quarter like yours. Yeah, but it would just be like the half on like a 
wall art. Yeah. You know, I mean, any like of your traditional style paint helmets, like your traditional shaped helmets are always pretty good. Or we go back and get the buffalo skull and you paint <laughs> Put it. Put a helmet oh, on yeah. that. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Buffalo I, skull. I, I've painted a couple of those for PPG, so oh. we can make that happen. So it's coming together now, Josh. Yeah, yeah. It'll yeah, be I, know, I, I, see. It. Okay. I mean, there's nothing left really to play. Now we are there. We've we got the big, there. the big stuff is now hashed. Yeah, out. <laughs> the rest is on your plate. <laughs> yeah, small, small details, dude. Yeah. So awesome. where do you, where are you guys gonna where are you guys gonna stay in Vegas? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Hopefully, wherever the party's at. Yeah. The Westgate. Josh has Josh has a lot of uh, irons in the fire. He's he's gonna pull through on this. I think. <laughs> Fuck you, man! <laughs> Is it, that's a compliment, though, right? No, yeah. that's shifting blame for when it doesn't happen. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly. Blame. It's it's multiple things. It's shifting blame. <laughs> it's shifting responsibility. It's, <laughs> nice. That's fantastic. It's everything. That's great. Where wherever we're staying, we're staying somewhere better than we stayed last year. I guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah. Holy shit! Where'd you guys stay last that was, year? That was, uh, on me. We stayed at the uh, yeah. The we won't, let's not talk. No, about we're it. gonna talk about it because it sucked. <laughs> Cause see, I, I've missed, and we could like, we could end the pod. They can end the podcast if they want, but we'll keep talking because we're just hanging out. All right, no, but we stayed at the park MGM. It sucked. Oh it was yeah, a shit it, it sucked. We, I don't know what happened. They we remodeled were, the whole downstairs, and they had all these badass bars and restaurants and like cool shit. They forgot they had a hotel. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they did. that hasn't changed since 1973. Like carpets, drapes, everything. It used to be fucking yeah. velour. It used to be a uh, cigarette. You know, park smoke. MGM used to be the fucking. It was something not what good. Call it? What's the name of that fucking place? Tropicana? No. Uh, Treasure not. Island? Excalibur. Treasure. I want to keep wanting to say Mandalay Bay, but no. I don't know. We're uh, just saying Yeah, because Mandalay names. Bay is that one that's right beside the hotel now, right? This Mandalay Bay is all, oh, so that's where they popped the people, wasn't uh, it? That's where yeah. Because that's where they had, the like, the, the trophy car race. Or I think that's where they had the active race. shooter, they uh, call it, yeah. Wasn't it? Maybe. Yep. See, I've missed all the drama. Hooters. Like, is Hooters, Hooters still oh, there? Hooters, I think it is. Hooters is still there. Yeah, but it's not. Is it open? <laughs> I, yeah, but you're probably gonna get. I bet, like, you, I bet you the rooms would be better than where we stayed. Oh, 100 percent, they would. Yeah, anything would be. We're going back to Old Faithful. Dude, the travel lodge would have been <laughs> fucking better <laughs> than where we stayed. God damn. See, I'm, I'm, I miss SEMA, like the the drama and the being in Vegas yeah. and seeing like the crazy shit. I still think it was just a fuck you to me because yeah. that's the only casino on the whole oh, yeah. strip that <laughs> yeah. doesn't that allow was. smoking. I've Wait, never I'm seen Josh. <laughs> Josh usually goes with the flow, right? Yeah, he and was. He, he was fucking pissed. <laughs> Did he? Uh, yeah, I'm, I generally yeah, I'm pretty easy to. I just roll. Did any, that shit was fucking stupid? It was. Did anything good come of that? Did we? Yeah, we we had one decent dinner, didn't we? We went to not that, there. Yeah, no. we went to Bavette's there. Yeah, yeah, we got it. There. Oh. Yeah. But it all, that sucked, right? Yeah. Yeah, it's, that sucked. Yeah, it was a waitress walks up. What do you guys want? Everything uh, sucked <laughs> from from the start to end. Yeah. 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 From when we got there and when we then we left. Yeah. It was bad. We're, yeah, there was the one good part where you could breathe in the casino because there was no smoking. That was pretty That was easy. all right. Yeah, that is true. You could breathe in every casino. All yeah. right, so then, then filtration. maybe they should put this back in the podcast because we'll bring back another segment. Best SEMA story. Well, I've already we, told we've heard Josh's story ever. Dude, I, I you I, know the one that I I have a great right, one that I was you fire away. I got I got one that I haven't ever told. We were at uh, at when we stayed at the Cosmo. Remember when were you there when that chick just took just went face first into the carpet? Do you remember that? We were standing over by the what do they call the chandelier bar? Yeah. And there's the uh uh Man, I think it's where the elevators are or something, and then you've got... This had to be like two years ago, right? Yeah, and then you've got the, uh, uh, you know, the cashier's counter right there. Yeah. And we're all standing there, and you hear a couple people like, whoa, 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 whoa. And I look over at the perfect time, and there's this chick in like a sequin little dress... She get out ahead of herself. Yeah, she got ahead of her. <laughs> <laughs> she, had, she was coming like out of the elevator. She had a cocktail, and you know when you do that like run, but you're, you're she's ahead of herself. She right? got, and the, it the was, controlled falling quickly. Yeah, and it turned into like a sprint. It was something like you'd see in a fucking movie. And the she, drink goes. She raced to the ground. Yeah, the drink goes, and the arms went like back behind, and just no bracing. Oh, just face first. I do remember and, like, that. Right into the carpet and scorpion legs. Oh, shit. Yeah, legs back over the head. And like the boyfriend or something was with her, and it, 
I remember was, that. Wasn't that the, that was the, the before our bad oyster last night? It was. Dinner. Yeah. 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 I stayed in that night. You yeah. did. I so you're the, the only oysters. one that survived. Yeah. <laughs> we got fucking poisoned. Yeah, we did. Well, yeah, that yeah. because that dude was hitting on. Yeah. You, remember? <laughs> the dude. We're like. Dude. And dude wanted, we got, yeah, we go, I'm telling you, we go to he STK. Wanted, he wanted a large helping right. of Jeremy. I'm telling <laughs> you what. We go to STK, that oh, this, yeah. the steakhouse, right? Yep. And it, the line is like, uh, you know, all the way around the fucking block, right? And we like we start walking up, and the uh, the host, he's this big fucking dude, and he somehow he like makes his way through the line. He would have broke you, dude, and he comes up to me. <laughs> yeah, he comes up to me. He's like, my man, my man, you, you guys need a table? Like out of all the people, I'm like. Yeah. He's like, let's get you in. How many people? I'm like, two. He's like, we'll get you in there. I don't, everybody in the we fucking walk line. Walk right by. Somebody, like, yeah. So yeah, you, you know, like, yeah it's two. just the two of us. And we're walking. I'm, you know, obviously, I'm like, you know, to him. Yeah, see? Yeah, I'm like, yeah, dude, I got <laughs> this. Kind of a big deal. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> I got us. <laughs> so we sit down. Like, yeah, and, you're going to have to work for it. I promise <laughs> you that. Did, yeah. Did we even order them or did they just. Oh, uh, he did, he did it complimentary. Yeah, yeah gifted oysters. So. Yeah, right. Brings out some oysters. Uh, right? I like, like oysters. Yeah, should not have eaten these oysters. Oh man, I think he knew from from the get go. He's he spotted us and he's like, "I'm gonna fuck with these guys." Yeah. yeah, he probably told every one of his buddies those oysters were fucking like three months old. Over yeah, I mean, I found those oysters. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> traveling the day after that. Whew. Yeah, yeah, no That's, bueno. Wow. So, so go ahead. So I, I've been to SEMA 12 years consecutively, and we all know the fucking Mexican card snappers, right? Yep. Yeah. So I had to fly in. Tracks. Those are Christian tracks they're handing out. Correct. Yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, words of, uh, what is the hell do they call those? Affirmation. Yep. Words of affirmation. So the, these wonderful. Doing? With huge titties on them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big blonde affirmations. <clears throat> um, so I had to fly in because I was at some show. And um, so I flew into SEMA, get into Vegas, and it is late as fuck. And I get in one of those shitty fucking taxis that always, like, pull up next to you in the uh, the airport. And uh, we're flying to the Trump because that's where PPG always put us. So we get right in front of the convention center where there's herds of those guys, right? And uh, one takes a step out right in front of the taxi that I'm in. And I mean, straight out of a movie, center punches this dude oh. over the windshield, oh. <laughs> blows the windshield out in a million fucking pieces, oh, shit. over the hood, down the back, blows the back glass Whoa. out. Cards are fucking everywhere. And this guy continues to drive. I'm like, holy fuck, we just hit that motherfucker. He's like, doesn't matter. doesn't have a green card. I'm out. <laughs> really? I'm like, holy shit. So we pull into the Trump and they have like the fancy concierge guys. Dude. Don't say it. you pulled into some other hotel. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's not helping. We, yeah. we pulled into a giant white hotel that has gold letters on it. <laughs> and uh, this concierge opens the door and lets me out, grabs all my shit out of the trunk, looks at the car and goes, get another one. <laughs> no shit. Yep. And the guy goes, yep. Peels out and leaves. This is, so and this I'm, is a regular. I'm, yeah, I'm right? standing there holding my bags going, what the fuck just happened? And the concierge looks at me and goes, you'd be surprised how often that happens. Oh, Jesus. Did you get one of the cards? No, I should have. So, <laughs> but yeah, full blown center punch this poor bastard Holy and shit. just Dude, kept that, going. Man. That rivals John Jackson's story. Yeah, John well, you, Jackson had a good one. Yeah, which, which that one? That? I don't think I don't know if I heard that one. You'll have to listen. Yeah, to John. Yeah, we can. His, oh, it was on the podcast. Uh, yeah, did you guys yeah. talk about it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, his fucking driver pulled like a desert eagle on some guy or something. Yeah. Does, yeah. Did the dude know? I mean, obviously he didn't know that the cab was coming. That hot. I mean, I, I think we probably doing forty five. We were on the boulevard, yeah. you know, so everybody's doing hmm. five hundred miles an hour right in front of the convention center, right? That and had just to be Mac that motherfucker. I couldn't imagine it being louder than you anticipated. Yeah, I, I thought this dude exploded in a billion pieces because, like, I've hit a deer before in Pennsylvania. Yeah. yeah, it's bad. It was worse than that. Like, I heard him go over the roof. You think that was like a depth perception issue, or what do you think was going on there? I think the guy, he had to have been like deaf, maybe. Or just Drunk and stumbled maybe blind yeah. as well. Yeah, and just maybe like deaf said, and blind. <laughs> and he stumbled out into yeah, traffic. Just rolled right out uh, right into traffic. <laughs> like not even in the crosswalk, just blasted right across. And I mean <laughs> full send. We, we've got a pre seamus yeah, story. I was gonna say we have to get like John that. on here, dude. Yeah, we got yeah. a we got a pre seamus story. We've got a guy, uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> a little Asian guy that uh 
helps. You know, he's a driver, right? He's got a limo service. So we use him for, you know, because we always got guys going back and forth to the airport, customers coming in town. His name is Jules. So, uh, <laughs> I don't one, know. <laughs> huh? Well, <laughs> yeah, this is one year going to SEMA. And uh, he's got get picks up a bunch of the guys. We had a bunch of guys come out, and he's got uh, four or five guys in the car with him, and he's ripping down a side street not far from the shop and just cranks a German shepherd, like a <laughs> full-blown domestic. Somebody's pet. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, a dom- big dog. This yeah. is a yeah. domestic dog, right? Probably like a Rex or, you know, <laughs> I don't know, like a bandit or something Zeus. like that. Yeah, like Zeus, a Zeus. Right, so it's something like that. And the guys bandit. are like... Yeah, the guy's like, whoa, dude, holy shit, you just hit a dog. And he looks, he's like, I, I hit a wolf. I think I, <laughs> I think we hit a wolf. <laughs> They're like, dude, that was a fucking dog. We're in the suburbs, there's like, no wolves. Yeah, yeah, no, we're like, right, yeah, this is a densely populated suburb. That is a German shepherd that is a domestic pet. Yeah. Oh, my you just gosh, he's a wolf. That thing had a name. <laughs> yeah, it had a tag, like there were tags that had a collar on it. I hit a wolf. Oh, <laughs> like, yeah. Another See, wolf down. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's probably you get worse. another one after watching uh, Yellowstone. It's probably wor- worse if you hit a wolf. Yeah, that nowadays, is true. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is true. Yeah. Yellowstone's being out in that side of the world. I could never do that shit. Really? really? Mm. Why not? I I don't trust horses. Hmm. Like I'll ride a Harley that will try to kill me, but that horse has got a brain. It'll not like something or see a snake and buck my fucking ass huh. off. That's interesting take. Yeah, I Phil, don't like you, horses. Phil, you got anything to say about that? Or <laughs> tell you what they don't like? <laughs> yeah, I know. I know 100 percent what we, they don't. We like. know exactly. We talked about this, didn't we? Yeah. The best yeah. thing you can do around a horse is don't get behind it. And if you ever do find yourself behind it, absolutely do not make fart noises. <laughs> <laughs> they will kick. Turns out they hate that. They hate that. They, they hate will, it more than anything. They will kick the ever living shit out of your young chest <laughs> your, your oh youthful eight-year-old non-developed chest <laughs> and send your yeah. ass into a wall God i swear damn. i've heard it so many times it is the greatest story <laughs> i hate that i even told it to you i know it's the funniest fucking thing i've ever heard so is and it, i've heard like so many funny it, things so is it you that got kicked yeah, in your yeah, chest yeah, but you, you made the fart noise kind no of he or? did he was a young little whippersnapper and so he gets behind this horse and just goes yeah. the old school oh, like double yeah. barrel yeah. and <laughs> lets yeah. it rip seven eight years old and that was like an instant just whoop, boom right in the chest and he's just <laughs> <laughs> yeah that Jesus. thing kicked the crap out of me <laughs> wow Ooh, it happened so fast <laughs> Live and you learn. You do. That's one thing I'll never do again. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do it from afar. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <not again. laughs> I was going to say, let's get, yeah. we're going to bullshit. Let's tell the truth. Because <laughs> I guarantee you in a couple of years when Charlie gets a horse, you'll be sitting over there and be like, watch. <laughs> you think he'll do it again? <laughs> and the thing will be like, whack. And I'll be like, huh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Too Miss far me, away bitch. now. Jesus. Oh, that, man. That fucked me up. That's amazing. <laughs> Pretty good. This has been great. It's been awesome. Man. We're fucking That's hammered. Fun. Let's all get on motorcycles and Fuck yeah. ride back home. Yeah, let's go do burnouts. No, no, we're not going to do any of that. Buddy. Thanks for listening to the Oil & Whiskey Podcast and Ironclad Original. Be sure to check out Lucky Strike underscore designs on Instagram. We'll see you again next week.